In the shadows of the magnificent Chicago skyline lies Evanston, Illinois. Home of the Northwestern Wildcats, where head coach Randy Walker will lead his team into battle against Northern Illinois University in a rekindling of an interstate rivalry. Saturday here on ESPN Classic and you are looking at Ryan Field in Evanston, Illinois, where the Northern Illinois Huskies from DeKalb come to town with an 0-1 record as they take on the Northwestern Wildcats 1-0 in the season here at Ryan Field. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley, along with former LSU star and member of the 2003 world champion New England Patriots, Brian Kitchen. Glad you could join us. Brian, there are so many storylines in this game, and let's start with the tale of two little big men. Yeah, there is. For Northwestern, they had a hiccup last week in their opener against Ohio University. First quarter, their starting tailback, Brandon Roberson, goes down with an ankle injury. They don't know how bad it is, but they don't fear because their backup they are equally confident of. Yes, Terrell Sutton, a name you need to listen to. He's only a freshman, 104 yards and two TDs. An amazing performance, a smart kid, a very humble kid considering what he did last year in high school. 5'9", 190 pounds, but Northern Illinois counters with a kid who's even smaller and maybe a little bit faster. You're right, he's a junior. He had his chance last year when A.J. Harris went down with an injury and in only seven ball games amassed 1,600 plus yards and 21 touchdowns. Last week against Michigan, 148 yards and a touchdown run, which we're seeing here, spectacular. Would not get stopped from behind, make it all the way down. The guy is spectacular runner. It's going to be fun to watch both of these kids go at it today. It was all for naught as Jordan yeah, Illinois yeah. lost a tough game because of five turnovers against the University of Michigan. It's the Big Ten versus the Mid-American Conference. It's all just ahead here from Evanston. Stay with us. At Hyundai, we believe for all the ways we can help you survive an accident, we should provide just as many to help you avoid one. The all-new 2006 Sonata. The only mid-size sedan with electronic stability control and six airbags standard. It's a Hyundai like you've never seen before. The nominees for the Major League Baseball Comeback Player of the Year Award, sponsored by Pfizer, are now online. Vote, and you may win a trip to throw out a ceremonial first pitch at the World Series. Built strong. Built comfortable. Built right. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Wrangler. Real. Comfortable. Jeans. Football Saturday here in Evanston, Illinois. The Northwestern Wildcats taking on the Northern Illinois Huskies. And here come the Cats, led by their head coach, Randy Walker. 1-0 on the season after last week's 38-14 win over the Ohio U Bobcats, who were victorious last night in surprising fashion over the Pitt Panthers of Dave Wonstadt. This is the seventh meeting between these two teams. Northwestern has won five games and tied another. Northern Illinois has had a tough time against Big Ten foes since 1971. Their record 121 and one. Joe Novak in his 10th season at NIU. His record is under 500, but it is what he has done in the last three years, Brian, that makes him extra special because this team has been one of the better programs in the country. Well, he's trying to build tradition here, and it takes a lot to get that going, and he's doing a great job with the staff he has and the kids he's got this year. He's got a lot of talent this year, and be ready for a good year out of them, I think. 2004 last year, they went to a bowl game, the Silicon Valley Bowl, and NIU triumphed 34-21 over Troy. Randy Walker in his seventh season and his Northwestern head coach, 31 and 41 is his record, but he has led the Cats to a couple of Big Ten championships or tied for several, I should say, uh, if not winning them outright. 
He is a graduate of Miami of Ohio, an old school guy, much the same as Joe Novak. As a matter of fact, Joe Novak was the linebackers coach under Dick Crum at Miami when Randy was a running back down there. Well, he said that Randy was a really great player, liked to do all the dirty work for him. And so he's been a great pupil, but always wanted to coach. And we had a great visit with him yesterday. Just a fantastic guy. I don't even know if we talked about football. Did we? I, I don't think we did at all. Joe Novak is old school. He's going to come right at the Wildcats today. You know, he is still steaming, even though he didn't sound like it in some of our conversations with him, still steaming over those five turnovers they committed last week because I thought they played the mighty Michigan in the big house toe-to-toe -to -toe and played them well. And were it not for those five turnovers, it might have been a different outcome. Well, you know, for a coach like him, he's an old ball coach. And what do you teach? Fundamentals. Well, what is fundamentals? That's lack of fundamentals. So it makes him look bad. And you can't get victories, especially against a Michigan team like that. You just can't have those things happen. We're moments away from kickoff. Northern Illinois will receive as Joe Novak looks on, looking to make amends for last week's showing in the big house, but you can't blame them. They, they roll up 411 yards of total offense. You do that today, and I dare say that that might spell victory. Huskies, A.J. Harris, number 24, Adrian Davis, number 39. Kicking off for the Cats is Joel Howells, number 93. They last met in 2000. The opener here at Ryan Field, Northwestern, one handily. Let's see what happens today. We are underway. Harris with the ball, and he is tackled inside the 20. Good special teams play after a turn of 17 yards. Phil Horvath, the quarterback, really made a name for himself last year in relief of Josh Haldy, the man he replaced, coming into the game and leading them to victory over Bowling Green 34-17. He will call the signals this afternoon for the Huskies. First and 10, NIU at their own 18-yard line. The game just underway. And the give is to Wolf, and you can hear the pad smacking up here, up front for the NIU Huskies. Their backs and receivers. Wolf, the man who just carried the ball and had the big game against Michigan. Jake Norton, the tight end. Sam Hurd, Brandon Davis, and Greg Turner, the wide receivers. Up front, it's Doug Free, Ben Lewick. Brian Van Acker, Jake Ebenock, Ebenhope, and John Brost. Van Acker and Free, all Mid-American Conference players a year ago, and Free considered to be a number one draft choice next year. The give again to Wolf and stuffing things up inside for the Wildcats, number 99, Corey Wooten was the first man to reach him, a true freshman. Up front, Kevin Mims, Barry Coldfield is the veteran there, Trevor Schultz and Corey Wooten, a defensive end who just made the tackle. Northwestern's best players on defense, their three linebackers, Nick Roach, All-American candidate, Tim McGargle and Adam Cadella on the outside. And in the secondary, it's Marquise Cole, Reggie McPherson, Frederick Tarver, and Deontay Battle, who is starting today for Herschel Henderson, who is injured. A look at Barry Cofield, who made the tackle on that last play. Third down, five yards to go. Huskies again. They get it to Wolf. He bounces outside. He's got the first down and then some before finally being knocked out of bounds by number 41, Tim McGarrigal. Well, you're seeing a lot, Mike, of what they're going to do against this defense. They're going to pound the football. That's what they're going to do. You see here, they're trying to get it outside with Wolf's explosive speed. He gets the edge cleanly. Nothing there. They need to have to contain him. That's one of the things they talked about having to do, keep those guys inside and not let them get on their edge. A gain of 13 yards for Wolf. First down, Huskies at their own 47-yard line. Again, fourth straight time. They give the ball to Garrett Wolf. It is going to be old-fashioned football. Finally caught by Corey Wooten after a gain of four. A week ago, Garrett, 17 carries, 148 yards. That 76-yard touchdown run was something special where he crossed, cut across the grain and actually looked like he had eyes in the back of his head, Brian. Yeah, he claims he's never been walked down before, and he surely wasn't on that one. 
Just a junior from Chicago, Illinois, played his high school football at River Grove Holy Cross. Second and six to pitch to Wolf. They're going in the other direction. And again, containment, a problem for Northwestern. Their defensive coordinator, Greg Colby, told us yesterday, as you just mentioned, Brian, our big job is to focus on insides, force the plays inside to our best people, and that's our linebacker. Well, their linebackers, they're their, they're their strength of this defense, and they talked about it yesterday. They've got to get them moving, get them, keep him off the edge. He wants to get their linemen covered up. He doesn't want those big guys from Northern Illinois on his linebackers. He was very impressed with the way they went out Michigan last week. Wolf a gain of 11 first down in Northwestern territory. This time the play action fake. Sam Hurd's got it on the outside. And another game close to a first down as Northern doing what it wants to do. You set up that run and then those passing plays become just bread and butter. Well, you, you talk about wanting to make his quarterback feel comfortable to be able to run the football that well. It's easy to throw the ball out there 20, 25 yards when you've got the running game working like you do. Number 24, A.J. Harris in the game now, the 6'1", 223-pound senior from Wheaton, Illinois. Played his high school ball at Wheaton North High School. He is faster than Wolf is, but he follows the ball right there. And does Northwestern have it? Looks like McGarrigo, number 41, was on top of it. And once again, turnovers plagued the Northern Illinois Huskies. And indeed, it was McGarrigo on top of the football there. All-American candidate, their Butkus Award candidate. Led the nation in solo tackles a year ago. Well, Joe Novak just has to be cringing right now. There's nobody that even touches Harris, and the ball comes loose. You talk about fundamentals. That's just getting the ball to the running back and him holding on to it. Has nothing to do with getting co contacted and then dropping the ball. I know he hates to see that. And Harris, a senior, a three-year letter winner. Uncustomary, uncharacteristic for that young man. So Northwestern has their first offensive possession of the game, and they're going right, right to the spread. Bazin a rolling right. He had a man wide open, and he can't hang onto the football. That man being the freshman Rashid Ward. Brett Bazinet. Just 173 yards shy of becoming the all-time passing yardage leader here at Northwestern. He is the straw that stirs the Northwestern drink and runs that spread offense oh so well. We had a chance to visit with him yesterday. Really like that young man. He's very well spoken, just a smart kid, loves to study film. Second and ten. Cats first offensive possession of the game to go inside now. Tyrell Sutton at the bottom of the pile up front for the Northwestern Wildcats as we take a look at their, their skill position people. Tyrell Sutton, the true freshman from Rackham, Ohio. Frayne Abernathy is their H-back, so to speak. Mark Fillmore, an outstanding wide receiver. Jonathan Fields and Ross Lane today playing for the injured Kim Thompson. Off, up front, it's Theory, Tripodi, Matthews, Keenan, and Zach Streif. They're all Big Ten candidates. Third and ten. Bazinet has to step up into the pocket. He's got a guy wide open. That's Sean Herbert. The junior from Oxen Hill, Maryland, with the first down Northwestern. Well, on third and ten, you're gonna be in a zone zone coverage. You got your safety on the hash. It's gonna leave wide open holes if you don't get any pressure. They did. They left him open to throw it right over the middle. Nice completion. Little low, goes down into the, onto the dirt and makes the play. That's what you got to do as a receiver. 18 yards on that play. Another first down, Northwestern. And Bazinet going to work right again. Number nine, Mark Fillmore with the reception again of about four yards. Up front defensively for the Huskies, it's Kenny West, Eric Pittman, Martin Wilson, the nose tackle, who can wreak havoc inside. And then Larry English, the right defensive end. The linebackers, T.J. Griffin, Jason Hutton, and Keenan Blaylark. Tyrell Sutton, the ball carrier, and the secondary. Alva Hansbro and Adriel Hansbro are identical twins. Adriel, just a minute older. Ray Smith and Dutson Utschick are the safeties. Ray Smith playing with a very tender 
right hip. He suffered a hip pointer last week against Michigan. And it was uh, some question marks as to whether or not he's going to play. There's a look at Alva Hansbro, one of the identical twins at corner we were talking about. Bazinet, I think, just elected that time, Brian, to get, throw the ball away. Well, I think he was actually, he was trying to get it over the middle to Ward, the freshman, but he just had a little bit too much on that. That's a tough throw right there over defender, about a five-yard pass. One of the one things that Brett is looking to do this season is just to become more and more consistent. That's what happens to great quarterbacks. Well, we asked him about that yesterday, and that's exactly what came out of his mouth. Second and ten, Wildcats. The inside pitch to Sutton on second and ten. You see, I absolutely love that play. Why? You've got an option to pitch it. You've got an option to shuffle it underneath. It's a triple option all at one time. Watch here. Underneath. Flips the ball, he's got the option out to his right. Sutton takes the ball, gains a few yards, but I think it's awesome because it's a triple option immediately. It's not a handoff, it's a triple option, the same as it was if he went up the middle. Third and short, and Tyrell Sutton, the true freshman, continues to do what he did a week ago here on this very same field, and that is look like a, a kid who is much more mature than just a true freshman. Yeah, it was fun getting to visit with him yesterday. Sharp kid, just really impressive, and, and he's impressed his teammates. They really like him. I think they might be his biggest fans. Humble, polite, realizes that he's here. He wants to help these seniors go out winners. The state of Ohio, Mr. Football, last year at Archbishop Hoban High School in Akron, Ohio. And again, Sutton gets the ball. He does that little stutter step, and all of a sudden, he's got four yards, Brian. Yeah, the kid's impressive. I really enjoyed visiting with him. I like his potential. It's amazing to me because Roberson is up and, and, and healthy, but he's not in the ball game. I guess they've made that decision of who they're going to go with, who's going to be their running back. And it looks like Tyrell Sutton is going to be the man. We should mention that it is an extremely hot day here in Evanston, about 90 degrees at kickoff. It will be a battle of attrition, that's for sure. A long drive going here for Northwestern now after that Northern Illinois turnover. Bazinet flips it out to Sean Herbert, who had to adjust his pattern just a little bit. Still a catchable football. Well, Herbert is, they call him Steady Eddie. He's the guy that makes the play. Third and nine, he's your go-to guy. Surprising to see that ball on the ground, but anybody can make that mistake. All you got to do is watch his helmet here when that ball comes in. Where is it? Is it upfield? No, it wasn't. He focused in on the football, but just didn't bring it in. Third down, seven cats. They're in the red zone. And this is the one place where the, the spread offense has a tendency to bog down at times. Let's see what happens here. Bazinet with all kinds of time. And he overthrows his man. Jonathan Fields had a step on the defender. That would have been a first down and maybe a touchdown had the ball been on target. Well, the problem with that is you talk to any defensive coordinator, what they want to do on any quarterback is get him moving. If you get him moving, he's not going to be as accurate. And a guy like Bazinet who told us that he needs to work on his accuracy and then you get him moving, then the likelihood that ball getting where it needs to be is not good. Joel Howells on to attempt the field goal for... Northwestern, junior from Sycamore, Illinois. He missed a couple last week against Ohio U. He's perfect on his extra points. This kick is up. And it is good. And with 8.20 to go here in the first quarter, the Northwestern Wildcats are taking a 3 0 lead on the Northern Illinois Huskies here on. Watch the play, Scotty! Watch it, watch it! That's Team Mom. My mom always watches what we eat and encourages us to eat our Campbell's Chunky Soup. Like chunky chicken noodle. Eat up those big chunks of chicken. She's also very encouraging from the sidelines. When you feed them, don't stop. Campbell's Chunky Chicken Noodle, it fills you up right. For men, competition is a 24-7 thing that demands the protection of new Speed Stick 24-7. That's why they developed the microabsorber technology in new Speed Stick 24-7. Powerful particles that can absorb up to 100 times their weight in wetness, keeping you drier. And ready for even the most demanding competition.
New speed stick 24-7 with microabsorber technology. Keeping men drier 24-7. Attention football fans. Can't get enough NFL this season? Follow your team and the entire NFL through the pages of Sports Illustrated. SI gives you the insight and analysis every fan wants with award-winning writing, spectacular photos, and coverage of all your favorite sports. Plus, as part of this special offer, you will also get a Team Choice NFL fleece jacket with the logo of your favorite team and this Team Choice NFL tee and the color of your favorite team. Both are free when you order 56 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.59 an issue. A savings of over 60% off the cover price. Use your credit card for faster delivery and get a free NFL team hat. Call now and gear up in support of your favorite team with the officially licensed Team Choice NFL fleece jacket, t-shirt, and hat all free when you order a year of Sports Illustrated. Call 1-800-835-9500. That's 1-800-835-9500. Or order online at sinflorder.com. College football Saturday here on ESPN Classic. Northwestern with a 3-0 lead over Northern Illinois here with 8.20 remaining in the first quarter. That field goal, a courtesy of a Northern Illinois fumble on their opening possession. Garrett Wolf, the junior from Chicago, waiting for his next chance to get the ball on offense, and he's been going gangbusters so far. Five carries, 40 yards. Averaging eight yards to carry the ball out of bounds. It will be automatically placed at the 35-yard line. That's where Northern Illinois will begin their second possession of the game. Ball is placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Northern Illinois takes over for three. Well, I know last, when we, last week when they had all those fumbles, we asked coach Norvath about those fumbles he said you know what we just didn't make a big deal about it he said sometimes when you do that it ends up making the problem worse well I've got news for him he needs to bring it up the, the man who fumbled the football AJ Harris a, a senior who is normally very reliable so it kind of came out of the clear blue sky but again expect them to attack Northwestern the way they attacked before the rollout and then to give inside the wolf, and you can see just how dangerous this young man is. It reminds me a little bit, Brian, of, of Michael Hart of Michigan. He's built low to the ground, but he's very, very powerful, and he breaks tackles, too. I would agree with that. I don't think he has the size his heart does, but his heart might be as big as Hart's. <laughs> Gain of 22 for Garrett Wolf. He continues to tear apart this Northwestern defense. And he just shedded tacklers. Horvath has got time. Northwestern loses containment. And Horvath, Horvath hooks up with Sam Hurd for another first down for the Huskies, a gain of 13. Well, Hurd did a good job there on the curl route. Took it about 10, 12 yards, just bent it in, and all he did was look for the opening. Harvath did, used his feet, got out of the pocket, made some room for himself, and made a good throw. Huskies first and 10 from the Northwestern 30. Horvath, straight drop back. Wolf all alone in the flat. And he flat out runs over Marquise Cole, Northwestern's best defensive back. Next Saturday, ESPN Classic has a full afternoon of live college football action. First at 3 p.m. Eastern, the Baylor Bears head West Point, head to West Point to take on Bobby Ross's Army Black Knights. Then at 6.45 Eastern, the Kentucky Wildcats are in Bloomington to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. College football live on ESPN Classic Saturday next week. The Husky machine continues to roll here on their second offensive possession of the game. First and ten. Again, they give the Wolf. And for one of the few times all afternoon, or at least here in the first quarter, Wolf kept under three yards. Tim McGargal on the tackle will be calling his name all afternoon because he flat out gets the most tackle on his teams on this team week in and week out, and it's not even close. Well, this guy is a very instinctive player, Mike. He loves to find the football. So if you're going to try to run it inside the tackles, you're going to have to have a body on him. 
because he will be there and make the stop. Second and eight from the 17. Horvath. Play action. Now he's in trouble. He's got to run. Finds a man open in the end zone. And he runs out of real estate. Sam Hurd nearly and A.J. Harris, number 24, both went after the football. Both almost knocked himself out on the goalpost. Yeah, the goalpost was the biggest threat there, but watch this ball. It's a wobbling duck. It's not very pretty, and it doesn't get to where it needs to go. Horvath with some mighty big shoes to fill. Josh Hawley was a great player and a great team leader. The coaches were telling us yesterday that perhaps his, his biggest strength is that he's a better touch passer than Josh Hawley was. Third and eight. From the 17, Horvath with time. He goes underneath. He's got Hurd. And Hurd very, very close to the first down. Well, it was just a slow crossing route. Inside man took, their, took all the defenders out. He came right underneath, wide open. Beautifully executed pass right there. I think they've done a great job of dissecting this North, Northwestern defense early on. Question is, can they hold up? Can they maintain this consistency? Gain of 11 yards, first down. The get inside the wolf and nothing doing there. Looks familiar. Last couple of plays, they had tried the same thing, same result. Got to cover up those linebackers. Some big boys up front for Northern Illinois. The man to the left of Randy Walker, Pat Fitzgerald, the All-America linebacker and defensive player of the year in college football back in 95 when Gary Barnett took the purple to Pasadena. He is one intense individual, and McGargle says everything he knows, he learned from that man right there. Second down, Haldy, bootleg. Jake Norton, 6'3", 262, a junior from Lake Lily in Minnesota, a gain of six yards. I'd like to see him go into the tight end. Second down. Hall, the tight end needs to punch it in, though, right there. I know he's regretting not getting that extra half a foot, but great play, boot action, play action away, turns back wide open. Another beautifully ex executed pass. That throws the linebackers just enough to allow uh, Jake Norton some open space to run. Third and goal. The give to Wolf, and he's stuck in the backfield. 72, David and Genny got there. And a whole host of Northwestern defenders. You know, last week, Mike, watching that film against Ohio University, it seemed to me whenever they got outside the, the tackles, whether it be a sprint pass, a sweep, a boot like we just saw, that's where Northwestern has trouble. They must have picked up on that because they seem to be doing a lot of that and being effective at it. The Huskies going for it on fourth and goal from the one-yard line. Challenge as well. <laughs> I was vertically challenged for a long, long time. Garrett Wolf by himself has gained 77 yards on the ground, more than Northwestern's total offense. Now, granted, they've had only one possession. The extra point is up. Chris Nendick, it is good. And Garrett Wolf. The man of the hour here so far. He's got the NIU crowd howling. Huskies lead 7 3. Loctite Power Grab grabs instantly with nine times higher initial hold than the leading brand. Without bracing, and 
without hammering. Loctite power grab. Project solved. Hey, this is Dylan Hart Jr. Test drive a pair of jeans from Wrangler Jeans Company, and you can win your own test drive around the track with me. But I'm driving. Go to Wrangler.com to find out how to enter. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? I don't care to ever go on another date again. I'm looking for like a serious relationship. I want to find a soulmate. I want to find a partner. It's time for PerfectMatch.com. Last month, thousands of men and women found and met their perfect match, and now you can too. Only PerfectMatch.com offers the Duet Total Compatibility System. Developed by Dr. Pepper Schwartz, one of the country's leading relationship authorities, Duet is a proven method to help you find happiness. Go to perfectmatch.com today and find out how you can get two months free through this special TV offer. We guarantee that we'll give you perfect matches with true soulmate potential. Come to perfectmatch.com and get started with your free compatibility profile. I feel like I custom made him myself. Out being on Perfect Match, I wouldn't have Darla in my life. I have never been happier in my life. I think that I have met my husband. Come to perfectmatch.com. Introducing E-Trade Complete. Control your financial world from one page and be free of ATM fees at any machine, any bank nationwide. In other words, be master of your domain. E-Trade Financial. Be extraordinary. The John Hancock Building, the tallest building there you see on the Chicago skyline. A look at Navy Pier. And you can bet that Northwestern uses Chicago as a recruiting tool when they look for young men to play in their football programs and their basketball programs that's for sure Willie the Wildcat uh, should be smiling right now because right now the Northern Illinois Huskies after that 10 play 60 far yard drive that took four minutes and 14 seconds off the clock has given the Huskies of Joe Novak a 7-3 lead here in the first quarter with 4.05 remaining Garrett Wolf has been the lead dog in this Husky attack is fumbled on a kickoff fortunately for Northwestern they recovered that was Omar Conte an, another true freshman out of Cypress Texas and if it wasn't for Tyrell Sutton I'm sure Randy Walker would be raving about this young man because he, he's very on, high on him as well true freshman out of Cy Cypress Texas and just a matter of concentration Brian Kinchin yep you got to have the bounces and fortunately, it bounced right in his chest. Mazinay and company begins this possession on their own 22. Quickly inside, Sutton spins off. He is dynamic. Yet Wolf is a little bit faster. There's no question about that. But this guy has that certain knack of finding that where the holes are, knowing where his blockers are, knowing when to spin at the right time. Well, he's got a little more size to him, Mike. He, he looks more of the complete package. A little taller, a little bigger. A little. He's a very fluid runner. 14 yards and another Northwestern first down. First and 10 from their own 36. The fake to Sutton and, and Bazinet going to his tight end. Erwin Cobb again, he's off the mark. Saturday night college football action on ESPN continues at 9 Eastern as Les Miles and the number five LSU Tigers take on 15th ranked Arizona State, the Sun Devils, in a meeting of two teams with national title hopes. Arizona State LSU is also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite, satellite provider today. College football prime time presented by Polaroid. And that was a prime time play right there. Tyrell Sutton, a true freshman, believe it or not. Well, Mike, we're seeing a lot of what we talked about in the opener. It's the backs making the difference, and Sutton here is just an explosive guy. We're seeing why they like this kid so much. Inside trio of Austin Matthews, Ryan Keenan, and Joe Tripodi opening up the holes. Sutton with 55 yards already. This is a pretty impressive performance because last week, Northern Illinois' defense, while young, did a pretty good job defending Michigan's attack. Well, they knew coming into this year that was going to be a weakness for them. They didn't know how good their defense was going to be, and they're getting a sign of what it looks like right now. And I know that Joe Novak is over there not real happy what he's seeing. 
But Northwestern offensively, I don't think they need to do anything but give it to the kid and sit back and watch. And that's exactly what they do is they give the ball. Oh, he fumbles the football, though. A freshman mistake, and Northwestern with just was fifth in the country a year ago with fewest turnovers, just 11 and 12 games, and just two fumbles, coughs it up there. And I'm not sure if a Northern Illinois defender, oh, yeah. Husky got a helmet on it. He got an arm on it. He, he pulled that thing right down. I mean, he has a very difficult, just got the hat right on it, popped it right loose. And IU takes over. Who says you were out of shape? Go deep. Front end pedestrian safety system. Just one of 120 not so standard features available on the all new German engineered Passat. Touchdown. Tonight on ESPN Classic at 8, take a look back at the 1985 NBA Finals between the Lakers and the Celtics. At 9, Classic drive through cranks up the engine with the thrilling 1991 Haynes 500. At 11, relive the excitement of the 2004 World Series of Poker. And a reminder, every weeknight at 7, Classic Now takes today's sports stories and looks at them through the eyes of yesterday. Classic Now with host Josh Elliott, only on ESPN Classic. What if is not a priority? What if never gets the time of day? What if always takes a back seat to how was work? In fact, the only time what if gets any attention at all is when what if becomes why us? Find out why millions turn to American Family Insurance. A little peace of mind for less than you'd expect. American Family Insurance. You know, with most wireless companies, you don't just get charged for calls you make on your cell phone. You also get charged for calls you receive. Did you just make that face? That, huh? You made that up. What? I didn't know that face. Well, at U.S. Cellular, you don't get charged for incoming calls. Did you just make that other face? That, I think I'm going to switch face. With unlimited call me minutes, there's no charge for incoming calls. U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. Right now, get unlimited local call me minutes on plans $39.95 and higher. Northern Illinois leading Northwestern 7-3 with 2.39 remaining here in the first quarter. Plenty of Husky red here, and they had to like this play, Brian. Well, I'm not making excuses for running backs. Taking care of the football is priority number one. I don't care what's happening. You've got to hold on to the football. And the man who stripped him of the football was Dustin Utchick, number 35, who made 17 tackles last week against Michigan. And that was a huge... Huge play right there. It's number 24. A.J. Harris giving Garrett Wolf a rest. A.J. in his own right, an outstanding running back. 4-3-9-40. Guy from Wheaton, Illinois. Played at Wheaton North High School. Three-year letter winner. And were it not for Garrett Wolf, we'd be raving about this young man. But what he gives Joe Novak is a, a special back to give Garrett some breathing room. This time again, the bootleg, Horvath very successful at, on that this afternoon. Chatone Powers, a senior from Riverside Brookfield, Broadville, Illinois, played his high school football at RB, Riverside Brookfield, and head coach Otto Zeman there. to the last pitch and catch. Horvath keeps it himself. He's got the first down and Horvath looking to the sideline. As the Huskies continue to try to Stay with their game plan and, and wear this Northwestern defense, which is very young and, and fairly thin down. First and ten. Corvette. In the college and picked off by Marquise Cole. 
This guy's dangerous. Trying to take it to the house, but he's, he runs out of real estate and knocked out of bounds by John Brost. The offensive right tackle. So Northwestern's young true freshman Tyrell Sutton gives the ball up. And Marquise Cole, the junior from Hill Hazelcrest, Illinois, gets it right back. The pass play 17 yards, the, inter or the interception return for 17 yards. Cole reversing his direction. Well, this guy is a speedster. He's their punt returner. He's dangerous when you get him in the open field and you got nobody out there but big guys tracking him down. They're lucky he, got, he found the boundary. He would have been in the end zone. An outstanding field position now for the Cats as they get the ball at the NIU 24-yard line. Bassinet has not looked sharp throwing the football this afternoon. Sutton has looked tremendous running the football with the exception of coughing that one up. This time they go to another back though. Brandon Roberson, who was the starter last week until he suffered that sprained ankle. Last week they were in the big house for the first time ever, but five fumbles, or five turnovers, four of those fumbles, and you just cannot do that against a team like the Michigan Wolverines. Northern Illinois was in the game for the majority of it, but again, costly misuse was their undoing. And that's not a trademark of Joe Novak. Coach teams, they are very disciplined. Inside handoff. But penetration there by number 92. Adam Schroeder. Backup defensive tackle for behind Eric Pittman. Schroeder, a 6'5", 280-pound sophomore. Loss of two yards. The Huskies will try to hold NIU with a 7-3 lead here at Ryan Field. Back with more on this college football Saturday. Classic now, 7 p.m. weeknights on ESPN Classic. You want it live? We've got it. Tomorrow's Classics now on ESPN Classic. Touchdown, Wildcats! Catch the cadets of Army as they take on Baylor, followed by the Hoosiers versus the Kentucky Wildcats. Next Saturday, starting at 3 Eastern, live on ESPN Classic. Built strong. Built comfortable. Built right. Wrangler five star premium denim jeans. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Everyone loves the look of bright, beautiful floodlights. But most solar lights are just too dim to do the job. Well, now you can have beautiful, natural, super bright light with Bell and Howell's Solar Power Floodlights. Other solar lights don't showcase your surroundings, but Bell & Howell's solar-powered floodlights will elegantly uplight your trees, enhance your priceless landscaping, light up your house number, making it easy to find, even light your kids' play areas, keeping them safe and happy. The secret of the solar power floodlights are their oversized solar collectors that power super bright internal LED lights for a full 12 hours, giving you light anywhere you need it. Bell & Howell's solar power floodlights are so strong, they shine brightly even with the lights on. Now that's power. Each solar power floodlight comes with a stake so you can put it anywhere on the ground and a mounting bracket that attaches in just seconds. The lights are fully articulating so you can point the solar panel in the direction of the sun and the floodlight just where you need it. And since Bell & Howell's solar power floodlights use no electricity, you'll save money. Plus, there's no wires and they're completely weatherproof. Bell & Howell's solar power floodlights are only $29.95 each. But call right now and we'll give you a second one absolutely free. That's two solar power floodlights for the breakthrough price of only $29.95. Make your home shine like a jewel. Call now and get two Bell & Howell solar power floodlights for only $29.95. To order your Bell & Howell solar-powered floodlights, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-247-4700. Or send check or money order for $29.95 plus shipping and handling to Bell & Howell Solar Floodlights, PO Box 3012, Wallingford, Connecticut. Call 1-800-247-4700. A look at the Baha'i Temple, a multi-faith 
house of worship on the shores of Lake Michigan and just a stone's throw here from Ryan Field where the Northern Illinois Huskies lead the Northwestern Wildcats as we begin the second quarter, 7-3 to score here. Northwestern with the ball, second and 15 from the Husky 15. And the give is the Tyrell Sutton runs into his own blocker, number 75, Vince Clark, goes to the ground. No gain on the play. It has been a story of turnovers so far for Coach Randy Walker and Northern Illinois coach Joe Novak. Both these guys, as we mentioned at the top of the telecast, old school coaches, both from the cradle of coaches, Miami of Ohio. Bassinet out of the shotgun, running the spread offense, rolling to his right. This time he's going to keep the ball himself, and he's run down from behind. They're not the biggest guys in the world, but they are quick. That was Ken West, a 6'1", 243-pounder out of Calumet City from Thornwood High School. Bazinet with a gain of four, but he never saw West coming. Well, they got him flushed out of the pocket. We talked about it earlier about getting him moving, and when he's moving, he's not as accurate. And I think he kind of made the wise decision here, pulls it down, try to get three points out of it, and walk away. Josh Howells will now attempt a... 29-yard field goal to cut the Husky lead to one. Howell's kick is blocked, and it's picked up. Second block kick in as many weeks for the Huskies. That's the cardinal rule of field goal. You cannot allow penetration, and they just allow a huge horde of the Northern Illinois defenders right through there. I don't care what kind of kicker you are. You cannot get it high enough to avoid the hand there. And they do a good job of knocking it down. And the recipient was number 23, Saul Ibarra from Elmwood Park, Illinois. It bounced right into his hands. And again, another miscue here. Some sloppy football early on, with the exception of the play of this man, Garrett Wolf. But great penetration on the part of the Wildcat defense on that play, a loss of four. For a guy who all afternoon has been gaining huge chunks of real estate. Well, they did what they needed to do there. Northern Illinois is trying to get him outside where he's been most effective and where I think their defense is weakest, but yet they did a great job of pressing the lineman owning the line of scrimmage and not letting him have penetration. He had nowhere to go. Second down, 13. Huskies have the ball at their own 31. The pitch to A.J. Harris. He's going to throw the football, and he's lucky he got away with that one. Joe Novak going to what Don King used to likes to call a little trickeration there. Trickeration, you're right. I don't think they're at the point where they need to be doing this. They're leading this ball game. It, it, it's not necessary. This is something for maybe late when you're desperate or you're or you're trying to maintain the drive to win the football game. This that's not something they need to do. They need to keep the hand the ball in the hand of the quarterback when it gets thrown, not the running back. Novak and his Huskies now face a third and 13. Corvac from the shotgun. He's got a man open. What a well-thrown football. The catch is made by Chatone Powers, number 83, the senior out of Broadview, Illinois. First down and then some. Harvath does a great job laying it over his outside shoulder. What does that mean? That means the defender cannot get to the football. You cannot defend that, even if he's right on top of him. He makes a great grab with it. Gain of 23 yards. The pass thrown over safety, Frederick Tarver. And Huskies have great field position. And here goes Wolf. He's going to take this one to the house. Nobody's going to catch him. Nobody laid a hand on Garrett Wolf. You know why that play worked, Mike? Because of the pass the play before. Loosened up the running lane. They ran almost the exact play two plays ago, and they had nothing. But they spread them out, letting them know they can go deep. And guess what? He walks into the end zone. I'm sure he likes it that way, too. 
Garrett Wolf, a 38-yard touchdown run. You know, coming into this game, his the seventh longest, all seven of his longest runs have all been for touchdowns. I don't know where that one ranks, but when he gets the ball in open territory, he's usually gone. Well, like I said, he claims that he's never been caught from behind, so that would explain it, would it not? Sometimes it's the run that sets up the pass, and sometimes, as you mentioned, it's the pass that sets up the run, Brian Kitchen. There it is. Beautiful throw. Spreads the defense. Gets them on their heels. 14-3 NIU over Northwestern here from Evans, Illinois. Can the Cats come back? We'll find out in a moment. Shaving the old-fashioned way can be a pain in the neck. Triple head shavers are expensive and don't give you a real smooth shave. Now, Bell & Howell has gone one better with the ZX4 four-head shaver. Bell & Howell's first and only electric shaver with a revolutionary four-head shaving system. With the ZX4 shaver, you'll get a quicker, closer, more comfortable shave than ever before. And the ZX4 is only $29.95 through this exciting direct-to-the-customer TV deal. The ZX4 shaver is from Bell & Howell, so you know it's made of the highest quality. The secret of the ZX4 shaver is its four floating heads that cut more hairs with fewer strokes, while the stainless steel cutting blades get incredibly close to cut even the hardest to shave hairs. The result is the quickest, cleanest shave of your life, one that everyone will notice. The ZX4 is ergonomically designed to fit comfortably in your hand. It's fully rechargeable and holds an eight-hour charge for up to seven days. It even comes with a pop-up trimmer to keep sideburns, mustaches, and beards looking great. The ZX4 gets into those hard-to-reach areas, so you'll get the best shave you've ever had or your money back. Call now, and we'll include the Bell & Howell Ear & Nose Hair Trimmer, a $20 value at no extra charge. That's right, you get the revolutionary ZX4 forehead rechargeable shaver and the ear and nose hair trimmer, a $120 value, all for only $29.95. But wait, order right now and we'll give you a second ZX4 shaver absolutely free. You just pay shipping and handling. That's two ZX4 shavers and the ear and nose hair trimmer, a $220 value, all for only $29.95. Call now. To order your Bell & Howell ZX4 shaver and receive a second ZX4 shaver absolutely free and the nose and ear hair trimmer. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-669-2828. That's 1-800-669-2828. middle number one there call him the big bad wolf if uh, he's the big bad wolf the Northwestern's defense is little red riding hood because he is having himself a day 12 carries 140 104 yards already 14 points 115 total yards and you can see what Northwestern has done as a team the redshirt freshman was back deep gained about 11 on that kickoff return and Northwestern's offense needs to ramp it up a little bit here and Brett Bazinet Brian Kitchen needs to start finding his receivers he really does they're limited really to just one dimension offensively they've been effective running the football Sutton has done a fabulous job but Bazinet needs to find his rhythm he needs to find his targets to get this offense opened up Side to Jonathan Field. He's got about seven or eight yards trying to pick up the first down. I like what they do there. They settle him down, let him throw a little 10, 15 yard flare control route. Simple pass, gain some confidence. Might not seem like much, but I'm sure it's huge for him to see one being hauled in instead of being dropped. And it's a heck of a lot better off at second and one or second and two as opposed to second and 12 or second and 10. Bazinet to Sutton. He's got some room on the outside. That little spin that he has. He had a tackler at his knees and just was able to feel that pressure and spin off. Gain of eight. Did a good job. Blocked the tight end down on the D-line. Pulled the tackle around. Had a nice little opening out on the outside. 
doing what's been effective on the other side of the ball, getting them outside the tackles. And with a guy like Sutton, you can afford to do that. The guy can run. 86 yards on the ground for NU, just 40 through the airwaves. And Bazinet would like to change that around. The fake to Sutton. A little too. Needed a little more air under that pass to have a chance to hit Mark Fillmore. Here's how this whole Northwest Northern Illinois situation started with the block field goal attempt. Saw Ibarra picking it up, and then a great pass play. Nice, nice catch by Chaton Powers, and then the TD Ron Wolf. Just plenty of room to run. Just like that NIU was on the board. The inside shuffle pass. Sean Herbert, the really the H receiver in this spread offense package. Gain of six. That's a completion. Yeah, it's a shovel, but it's a completion. Two in a row. Building momentum. Slowly but surely. Third and four Wildcats. 10-44 remaining here in the second quarter. Northwestern down 14-3. Bazinet, who has not been really under pressure all afternoon. It's been his own um, bad throws that has been his undoing. A gain of 11 and a first down. The pass to Jeff Yarborough from Rickton Park, Illinois. A little return route there. Pressed it inside, spun around. Bazinet hit him. He looked tentative on the throw. He doesn't look real confident in, in his approach right now. Hopefully he'll get a little more field as the game goes on. Five wide receivers in the game now for Northwestern. Bassinet, the lone running back, and usually that's what happens. He runs the football. The quarterback draw, he's got a close to a first down into Northern Illinois territory after the gain of nine. Well, Joe Novak talked about him. He said that option, you gain an extra runner, and he's an effective guy. He's a quick guy, and I, we talked to Randy Walker. They said, they don't recruit for quarterbacks that can't run because they have to be a running back in this system. Credit Austin Matthews, number 62, and Joe Tripodi, number 51, for opening up the big hole. And Tyrell Sutton got room on the outside, and he gains eight more inside the Northern Illinois 30-yard line. Well, we're starting to see conditioning play a role here and maybe a, a somewhat of a lull from the Northern Indiana, Illinois guys. They just, they got up a couple of touchdowns, leading by 11. They need to look look deep, find some heart. That's Alva Hansbro, one of the twin quarterbacks here for Northern. Breathing a little heavy. Outside to Eric Peterman. That's about the seventh different receiver that Bazinet has hit this afternoon. Well, I think the element here at, at work that a lot of fans don't ever really realize is that these guys are tired. They've been on the field both sides of the football. It doesn't matter offense or defense. They're tired. You don't get in game shape unless you're playing football games. This is only week two. They're still getting in game shape and learning how to condition. NIU with their hands on their hip and Northwestern already to run a play. Inside the Sutton. And Sutton, after that sweet move, you cannot teach them. It's instinctive. It's what makes a great running back a great one. Knowing where the hole is. Smooth operator right there, baby. Just what we talked about. I think that's pure conditioning right there. I don't think it has anything to do but other than that. And the guys took advantage of it. Gutting them right up the middle, too. An 18-yard touchdown run for the true freshman from Akron, Ohio, Tyrell Sutton. And the thing I like best about that, Brian, he was the GOAT several moments ago when he coughed up the football when Northwestern was driving. He didn't get down on himself, and he came right back and scored the touchdown right there. Joel Howes with the extra point. It is up. It is good. Randy Walker talks about responding when you find adversity. Northwestern responding there. In a straight sprint, most performance cars perform equally well. But the world isn't straight. Which is why the Audi A4 is available with Quattro all-wheel drive. 
the power and control of 25 years of Quattro in the Audi A4. Take a test drive today. Cindy, will you give me the Morgan report before you leave? I'll get through all the financials this weekend. Bob, when are you going to get a life? Too busy to meet people? Call It's Just Lunch. We'll personally match you with someone who shares your interests, then make all the arrangements for lunch or drinks after work. No pressure. It's Just Lunch. It's Just Lunch is a terrific thing for people that are busy. You basically show up. It's effortless. It's easy. I just got tired of the bar scene. Let It's Just Lunch match you up with someone new. Call now, 1-800-99-LUNCH. Attention football fans, can't get enough NFL this season? Follow your team and the entire NFL through the pages of Sports Illustrated. SI gives you the insight and analysis every fan wants with award-winning writing, spectacular photos, and coverage of all your favorite sports. Plus, as part of this special offer, you will also get a Team Choice NFL fleece jacket with the logo of your favorite team and this Team Choice NFL tee and the color of your favorite team. Both are free when you order 56 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.59 an issue. A savings of over 60% off the cover price. Use your credit card for faster delivery and get a free NFL team hat. Call now and gear up in support of your favorite team with the officially licensed Team Choice NFL fleece jacket, t-shirt, and hat all free when you order a year of Sports Illustrated. Call 1-800-835-9500. That's 1-800-835-9500. Or order online at sinflorder.com. Mike Adamley and Brian Kitchen back here in Evanston, Illinois. Ryan Field, the Northwestern Wildcats, hosting the NIU Huskies and trailing the Huskies 14-10 with 9-14 remaining here in the second quarter. Northwestern just polished off a nine-play, 78-yard drive, culminated by the touchdown run by Tyrell Sutton. A.J. Harris, the man who gets the ball for the Huskies on the kickoff return, gets it out to the 30-yard line, and that's where NIU will begin its next possession. You know, Joe Novak has really turned this NIU program around two years ago when they really had that breakthrough season. They went 10-2. and two. They won their first seven games. They beat Alabama. They beat Maryland, both in the top 25. And guess what? They didn't go to a bowl game. But Northwestern did. They were 6-6, six and six, and they wound up in the Motor City Bowl, and he said, somehow, that's not right. That's absolutely Absolutely right, not right. Randy Walker didn't care about that, but I think NIU has had it against the Cats for a long for the last two years because of that bull snub. Horvath. A bullet out to Sam Hurd, a gain of seven. And Walker and Novak are good friends, mind you. Well, I think, Mike, here, Northern Illinois needs to avoid a three and out. I think after that defense kind of collapsed a little bit and gave up the big touchdown, I think they have to have something going here offensively to keep the momentum in their favor. If they don't, things could happen. There's nine minutes left in this half. They would like to eat clock the same way that Northwestern did on their drive to give us the Garrett Wolf, who has been oh so productive this afternoon, just like he was a week ago against Michigan, very close to the first down. And this in from the northwestern sideline there, freshman defensive end Corey Wooten out with a neck sprain. Whether or not he will return is unknown. And this is a, a unit that's thin to begin with, so that can't help and use cause. First and ten Huskies from their own 39-yard line. They lead 14-10. The give to Wolfie is stopped in his own tracks first to reach him number 95 Kevin Mims we're talking to Greg Colby yesterday to the defensive coordinator that's the one thing he said you mentioned it earlier Mike they're thin at defensive line and they're gonna do a lot of substitution in there a lot of substitution Mims Barry Colfield Trevor Schultz Corey Wooten is out of the game Second and ten. 803 remaining. Fake the wolf. A little waggle in action there. 87 Brandon Davis out of Broadview, Illinois, and Riverside Brookfield High School. He's sort of like their R back, their H back and tight end. They use him once in a while, and he can be productive. He was here. 
Well, he was productive right under the point where he tripped. <laughs> that's the position that you played. Well, I, I know, and that. that's a tight end move right there. Yeah, to get the ball and fall down. <laughs> a, a triple threat, trip, stumble, and fall. Third down and seven for the Huskies. Horvath rolling to his left, looking for Hurd, and again he throws it into double coverage. He didn't look real sure about that decision himself when he let that one fly. So the Northwestern defense standing tall and rising to the occasion here. Horvath kind of pushes it a little bit. Adam Cadella, number 43, the linebacker, falling back into the play. Good coverage by him. Half a second late on that decision. Gets it out there earlier, no hands on the ball, get the completion, first down. One of the few times that uh, North, Northern Illinois has punted this afternoon, Andy Dittbenner. Back deep is Marquise Cole, standing at his 12-yard line. Cole has got it at his 18, across the 30. He's got the right sideline. He's free. Nobody to beat. Special teams touchdown for Marquise Cole. Northwestern back into the lead. 83 yards on the punt return. Hate to say I told you so. Warned him and warned you about him earlier. He was a photo finish loser in the 100 meter state finals. In Illinois, the guy can fly. He really didn't have to there though. I think I might have been able to get to the end zone. You know, he came into the game with a listed as somewhat questionable with a high ankle sprain. Doesn't look like that sprain's bothering much. A 4-2-40 guy. You're right, Brian. This guy's got great, great quicks. Northwestern's fastest player, and he showed you why there as he turned on the Jets for that punt return. And a touchdown. Talked about momentum. That will kill the momentum right there. Part of this he set up himself and then watch the great block that Marquise will get. Number 27, Reggie McPherson turning a Husky player in. And that's is there anybody within 20 yards of the guy? Nobody close, nobody close, and nobody was containing either. Watch the block. Where, where are the white jerseys? Where are the white jerseys? Fred McTarver lays somebody out as well. Man. That coverage, not good. Now that is going to get under Joe Novak's skin. Well, it was a poor punt, too. The punt kind of, when I was watching it, it was falling backwards. It didn't have much hang time. Didn't get it down the field very well. They had a huge problem with punting last year. They had the worst average last year in the league. Where is the containment? Almost blocked for starters. That's one of the reasons why the punt was bad. And then some great blocks on the part of number 27 there at the end, Reggie McPherson. Doesn't get any easier than that. It well, sure helps to have the kind of speed that Marquise Cole has. As a freshman punter, but last year, 31.2 yards punting the football. Last in the MAC. Can't have that. Little pooch kickoff here. Kind of surprising with 7-0-1 remaining here in the first half. A reminder, next Saturday, ESPN Classic has a full afternoon of live college football action. First at 3 p.m. Eastern, the Baylor Bears head to West Point to take on Bobby Ross's Army Black Knights. Then at 645 Eastern, the Kentucky Wildcats are in Bloomington to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. It's a great basketball rivalry. It's also a good football rivalry. College Football Live on ESPN, ESPN Classic Saturday next week. The man of the hour here at Ryan Field at Evanston, junior cornerback Marquise Cole, who took one to the house to put the Cats back on top. 17-14, seven minutes remaining here in the first half. Huskies back on offense, and they give it to their bread and butter running back, Garrett Wolf. Gain of seven. Can I ask you a question? What just happened? I swear I looked at the scoreboard. It was 14 to three. You look back a few minutes later, 17-14. What a huge turnaround. Brian Van Acker is down and wincing, and Northern can ill afford to lose this young man because he is an, an all-Mid-American Conference player and one of their best offensive linemen. 
We'll check on his static and get back to you right after this timeout from Evanston. Built strong. Built comfortable. Built right. Wrangler five star premium denim jeans. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. You're pretty. Waiting long? Yeah, and I'm late. No car, huh? Uh-uh. Bad credit. Uh, I got a car. Hey, I can't get financing. Sure you can. It's easy. Just call 1-800-BAR-NONE. If you need car financing, even if you have bad credit, 1-800-BAR-NONE could get you approved in minutes. 1-800-BAR-NONE? You can? I am? Really? Scintillating. Need a car? Call 1-800-BAR-NONE. Everyone deserves a second chance, bar none. Call now. He was football's minister of defense. Right before the snap read, you said, here comes Jesus. But did all his sermons hit the right note? Homosexuality is a decision. It's not a race. Sports Century, Reggie White. 8 p.m. Monday on ESPN Classic. Give your favorite baseball player the edge over peers in competition. Now, your favorite player can be the best hitter on the team. Make batting practice a fun year-round activity for baseball and softball players of any age with the Bat Action Trainer. The Bat Action develops hitting skills, bat speed, and confidence. Experience high-speed batting action that closely simulates real batting conditions. Hitting the Bat Action feels just like hitting a real ball. But no more chasing balls, no more broken windows, no more rain delays. Bat Action can be used indoors or out and it's portable use bat action in practice or to warm up before games bat action is the basketball goal for hitters it's a must-have for every backyard the bat action is only 359.99 but wait order now and we'll take 140 dollars off the price get bat action for a special holiday price of 219.99 you cannot buy bat action in stores order the bat action toll free at 1-800-593-3615 that's 1-800-593-3615 all Mid-American Conference Center, Brian Van Acker, number 65, being taken to the NIU locker room on a cart. After this play right here, you can see him blocking number 38 of Northwestern. That's linebacker Nick Roach. Really can't tell what happened, whether Roach landed on his neck or somehow he had his leg get caught underneath him. I think they're actually looking at the other leg that did not hit the ground. It's kind of strange. In either event, this is a big loss for NIU because he is one of the uh, uh, one solid guy in the middle. That's for sure. George Douglas taking his place now, number 58. As the give as the wolf, he tries to cut back against the grain and very productive at doing that. He's got the first down for Northern. They need to regain the momentum that they had just seemed like minutes ago. Yeah, they've got to do something here offensively. They cannot go off the field without even at least getting some field field position out of this because looks like the wind has come out of their sails and they need to keep this keep this rolling. Being in the giant killer, you you can't have big lulls in games like this. They do have a first and ten at midfield, but they trail the Wildcats of Northwestern 17-14 with 6.06 remaining here in the first half. Horvath gives to Wolf and from the backside number 40. It's Eddie Simpson, a linebacker of sophomore from Houston, Texas. Randy Walker digging deep into his arsenal. They're, they're going three and four deep now. Well, that's the thing. You talk about depth. That's the thing that kind of separates these two ball clubs is the depth of Northern Illinois. It's just, it's just not as good as a team like Northwestern. It's harder for them to hold up. Top of the telecast, we talked about these two running backs, Garrett Wolf and Tyrell. Sutton. They have been the story so far. That and turnovers. And special team mistakes. And great plays on special teams. Well, Northern Illinois hasn't been able to get anything upside in, 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 the, in the middle of that Northwestern defense. But even with Wolf's size, he, he's not that big. He's only 5'6, 170. So trying to run him inside or off ta or inside the tackles. It's a difficult thing for a guy his size. He has nothing to bring with it, so when he gets touched, he's going to go down. Well, they've taken him out of the game now and brought the bigger back, A.J. Harrison, number 24. 
the big senior, and they use him as a blocker as Horvath rolls to his right. Looking, looking, looking under pressure, and he throws that one out of bounds. He had no choice. Northwestern defense coming up big here on third down. And the momentum swing has shifted to the side of the guys wearing the purple jerseys. But when you see A.J. Harris come in the game like that, you can almost bet that they're going to throw the football. Wolf is not as good of a blocker one-on-one. -on -one. Wolf come, I mean, Harris comes in, does the job to protect the quarterback in passing situations. That's a that's a big key for Northwestern. Andy Ditbenner, the punter for North NIU. The last time this man was back deep, all he did was return a punt 83 yards for a touchdown to put Northwestern back on top in this football game. Dip Benner hits this one well, but maybe a little too well as it goes into the end zone. Northwestern will start at their own 20. The ESPN College Football Encyclopedia is the biggest, richest reference guide ever published on the history of college football. Read about the profiles, records, and statistical leaders and fight song lyrics of all 119 Division I programs, the Ivy League schools, and the most prominent historically black colleges dating back to 1869. Box scores for every major bowl game ever played, vote breakdowns for every Heisman race, available now wherever books are sold. You cannot have long promos when you're playing against and covering a team that runs the spread offense. No, you cannot. You'll miss it. <laughs> Close your eyes and it's done. Short gain on the play for the Wildcats. Randy Walker in his seventh season here. And the non-conference games, very important for this team. Bazinet. He's got the screen going for him. Brandon Roberson, the sophomore from Perlin, Texas, picks up the Northwestern first down. Gain of 14. Gain of 19, excuse me. Well, if you're going to ask me, I'm an offensive guy, and I absolutely love the screen. This is a nice little quick one off the straight drop back, but their O-line does a great job of getting out in front of him and paving the way. And Bazinet now starting to feel the rhythm, starting to manage this football game. First and 10 cats at their 42. The fake to Roberson, and Bazinet takes it himself and finally gets out of bounds, and there may be a flag on the play. Unnecessary roughness, personal foul. Number 48, Ray Smith, who's not at 100% today. Got to be smart right there. That's not a smart thing. Hitting the quarterback out of bounds. They, they protect those quarterbacks like they're precious little angels. Late hit. Number 48. Well, there's no question the about that one. He was That's way out of bounds. That's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Try to, try to get the old pull the hands away. I didn't do anything. Look, doesn't work. You know, Brett may have drawn that himself by purposely throwing down, throwing, you know, slowing down and, and uh, Smith making the mistake. Wildcats now deeper into uh, NIU territory to give and the bounce outside by Tyrell Sutton. He's the real deal, folks. Gain of 12. You know, after last week's game against Ohio U, nobody was quite certain if it was the caliber of competition or the talent that the young man possessed. I think it's definitely the talent. Definitely the talent. Even last night, you watch Ohio University take down Pittsburgh, put some legitimacy on that win of theirs last week and what he did against them. Cats controlling the football, controlling the clock, and you can see how he gets to the edge so quickly. A gain of about three or four. Didn't look exciting there, but he's on the outside and on top of the defenders before they get a chance to react, Ryan. He really is. They're getting comfortable with their offense. I think they're, they're starting to believe that they're kind of gaining the momentum. They're getting on top of them. They just need a little push to get over the top. And Randy doing a good job of rotating his, his, his running backs today. He's also used Brandon Roberson a little bit, Gerald, Gerard Hamlet. He's gone into the game once or twice. So he's deep at that position. 
But Sutton definitely the bread and butter guy. Now here's another element of his game. A lead blocker for Brett Bazinet. Well, it's Bazinet, the guy that they add to their running game because he's so athletic and, and because of the spread offense, he becomes a viable threat on the ground. The kid can move and make things happen. You know, Randy was telling us yesterday that never in his entire life did he ever think he'd run a spread offense. This I guy comes from Big Ten country. I was hoping you were going to bring that up. That was the comment I loved the most. He said when they talked about going into spread, he said he felt like it was like communism or something. He's like, I can't do that. That's against all traditional rules of football. I can't do it. Bazinet on Thurs down. We've got a flag on the play. You know, one of the, the reasons, one of the first things they did when they decided to go to the spread offense, they they wanted to run the football, and they know they couldn't get the same kind of talent that Ohio State and Michigan gets on a consistent basis. So they went down to Clemson, him and his staff, and they watched them and, and Terry Bowden run that program down there, and, and he saw this how the spread could work, especially the running game, and he said. We're going to use that. Well, he said we spread it to run it. And then the other comment I love that he said, he said, if they're going to put everybody up in the box and try to stop us from running it, he looks at the OC coordinator and Mike and he says, hey, throw it every play. I don't care. They're not going to load up and stop our running game. Well, guess what? He's going to throw it this time. Five wide receivers on third and six. Bazinet. Oh, beautifully designed play inside the Mark Fillmore. Number nine. It's a little wide receiver screen where he just kind of bumps up turns back in easy throw for Razane he gets the two back the two receivers that were in there to his side leading the way instead of the lineman it's just a pretty looking play these screens I tell you you've got to mix them in their their goal look even gets the lineman out there right in front of him beautiful play nice call at the time third and five beautiful time for it gain of 11 for Fillmore first down for Northwestern Bazinet doing the running himself and he bounces the ball but Johnny on the spot, Tyrell Sutton. Can you believe it? Wow, look at that. This kid is everywhere he's supposed to be. Now, the question was, was Bazinet's knee down when he coughed up the football? He uses his hand. No. Oh, no, there it is. There it is. Uh-oh. We might have a replay on this one. That's up to the technical advisor and the referee, J Josh Howell, the, pu the uh, place kicker, running onto the field to get this kick off. Well, the thing that's going to save him, I think, is that he did not have control. If you look at the replay again, watch the ball come loose right before his knee hits. You'll see the ball come out just barely. See it come out just barely. And then his knee hit. So guess what? He doesn't have possession. He can't be down. This is not unlike what happened to Chad Henney for Michigan in the Notre Dame game when they were knocking on the Irish door. That's exactly right. There is the technical advisor in the booth. He is the guy who makes the call. There's the technical advisor on the phone. He's talking to an official on the field. Now, instant replay was just an experiment last year in the Big Ten, but because it was so successful, they decided that the other conferences, most of the other conferences, 11 to be exact, uh, are now using it. Well, I think that if they would have called this ball down originally, they probably wouldn't reverse it. But because they let it go, I don't think there's enough evidence to think that he was down. I think they're going to leave it, leave it as is. I think the ball popped loose. You never know, though. Sometimes replay will not go the way you think. But to me, it's blatantly obvious that this ball comes out when he's hit right there. And it comes out, and his knee touches. So now the question becomes, do the referees let the play stand? Of course, in most cases, they would have lost the fumble, and they would hope that they would call it down. Yeah. But in this case, he doesn't, Randy Walker doesn't want this play reversed. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I'm amazed it's taken them this long, but I guess they got to act like they're looking at every angle and making sure they don't well, make a One mistake. of the things why they, they liked it so well in the Big Ten is that it didn't take up that much time. There were only like uh, plays were stopped 28 of 57 times in all the Big Ten games played last year. Overall, 21 calls were overturned in, in 43 stoppages of the game. And just another three minutes was added on to the average time of the game. But well, we're getting our three minutes at least. <laughs> But by and large, instant replay in college football, the way it's done with the technical advisor and coaches staying out of it is a good thing, I believe. Looks like they're going to reverse it.
I mean, that's what you, what do you, what do you, what is control? What is control of the football? Because the ball is loose. It's still in his arm. I guess they're going to call it with control. Down before the fumble. So they're going to give Northwestern. And that's one of the, what's one of the criticisms of instant replay? Because if they do call it down. After, after review. review. The ball carrier's knee was down. The ball will be placed at the six yard line. Second down. Please add four seconds to the clock. So the knee down, Bazinet's knee down. But look, I mean, play automatically dead. Let's watch it. What what means control? Is control that just it's, it, it's in his arm, but it's out right there. It's out. It's clearly out. Of, it's not tucked. But I guess that's control. But in, anyway, any way you look at it, it still takes away a little bit of their momentum, although they are on the five, six yard line. Cats with a 17-14 lead and about to go up six more. So why did we waste our time with that replay? <laughs> exactly. Tyrell Sutton planned on scoring a touchdown anyway. It didn't matter. Didn't matter. It was off a fumble or off a handoff. Either way, he's fine with it. His second second touchdown of the afternoon. You know, only recruited seriously by Northwestern and Illinois. Ohio State didn't want him. And, and because I think it's a couple of teams got on him late because of the interest showed by the two Big Ten teams. Well, he, he Randy Walker and them offered him February of his before his senior year. And he said because they had such faith in him early, he was going to be loyal to them. And that's where he made his decision to go. Also very interested in, in his education and, and graduating from college and getting a degree. He is he is what college administrators dream about without question in college football coaches you talk about a solid kid he makes it look easy doesn't he so do those offensive linemen they help pave the way can't forget about those guys. number 74 dylan theory the big six foot eight 300 pound sophomore joe tripodi and now time to do 24 push-ups gang as northwestern has taken control of this football game with 150 remaining to go here in the first half Tyrell Sutton, a man-child today. And we go back to the fumble. Now, if his knee is down, the plate whistle blows. It doesn't matter where, if he's got control, though, right? I guess. He's got his ball, his arms around the football when he's hit right there, but it is coming out. I mean, I guess they can He consider. still has control, knee down. Yeah. He hasn't lost the ball, so knee down. Yes. That's good it. Point. He, still, he still is in control somewhat, I guess, of the football, so good call. Either way, Northwestern was not about to be denied. Tyrell Sutton was not about to be denied. And they've taken a 10-point lead on the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Harris back at his five across the 20, out to the 30. And he has got some running room before finally being tripped up. turn of 47 yards by A.J. Harris and I see if we can see it again because not quite sure who tripped him up on the play takes it up the middle bounces outside a contain there's the kicker Josh Howells missed him well I think this changes their approach now whether or not they're going to try to get back to the end zone whether they go two minute or not I don't think if they would have had as good a return they would be setting up trying to make something happen here Todd Dockery, the Northwestern player who saved the touchdown. Horvath in trouble. Steps up in the pockets. Got his man, but no control. And he was out of bounds when he caught it. Sam Hurd. 135 now remaining here in the second quarter. Well, Horvath didn't have anything right there, and he held it just for another half a second too long before he put the ball in the air. Didn't get a good spiral out of it. Floated on him a little bit. No chance for that ball to be in play. Second down and 10 for Horvath and company. Garrett Wolf back in the game as the lone running back. In this one back offense. The screen to Wolf. Oh, Adam Cadella, 6'4, 240 out of Dublin, Ohio. Missed the final nine games of last season with a knee injury, but he has bounced back, and Randy Walker calls him uh, one of his steadiest defensive players. Hard to run screen in two-minute offense because they're usually going to see that, react to it, and he did a wonderful job of picking up on it. He's got some pedigree, too. His dad, Dave, played for the Wolverines. 
Horvath going for it all, but his man, the man that he was looking for, got hung up. Britt Davis, who's actually the backup quarterback as well. Davis is a guy that usually gets about 20% of the reps at quarterback during the course of a NIU practice week. The Northern fans would... I really don't think Northern Illinois wants to be funny. Well, the Northern fans would like to see them go for it on fourth down. Well, you're putting the ball back into Marquise Cole's hands again. You better have some coverage this time and contain this young man. Not, uh, not only that, the, the, with the spread offense, a hunt, one minute and three seconds is an awful lot of time. Low line driver, too. Looking for that same right sideline that was so good for him on the touchdown run. That time, Northern Illinois able to contain a little better Jason Baez, the punter or a backup punter. We got another injured NIU Husky on the play. Marquise Cole, a gain of 18 yards on that punt return. And we talked about this game as it would wear on being a battle of attrition because of heat. So far, we have seen one Northern player go down. That was Brian Van Acker, their starting center. Well, the sideline was their friend on that one. It was to the short side. If he'd had maybe five more yards, it could have been another long one. Now backup linebacker Bob McLaren on the ground. Sophomore from Wheaton, Illinois, Wheaton North High School. I guarantee you that is not a uh, That's what I was about kind of to say. Yeah, was that like a smile? smile? I don't <laughs> think so. He looked like he was squinting. Yeah, there, there's not much to smile about for Northern Illinois lately. They haven't done much since the first quarter. Now his players are dropping like flies. Can't be feeling too good right now on the sideline over there. Looks like his own man takes him out from behind. Yeah, That's number 22, Cass Prime, had been was blocked into McLaren's back, the back of his knee. I don't think there's a worse feeling in the world as a player when you're standing there and all of a sudden somebody wipes you out from behind. You have no control over it. Can't see it, can't defend it yourself. Yep. Big day in college football, a halftime report, scores and highlights from around the country and a special piece on that 1995 miracle season here in Evanston when Gary Barnett took the purple to Pasadena. Tyrell Sutton with the ball, another big game, but this one may be called back. 17 yards on the carry, flags all over the place. Looked like the wide receiver there, young freshman, Rasheed Ward, got some cloth. There's Ward right there. Anytime that a guy goes sideways, you know he's got a piece of somebody's shirt or shoulder pad. Well, when they go sideways, you've got to let go. And if you fall on top of them, nine times out of ten, they're going to call you. Even if they can't see it, they're going to call it. Give inside to Omar Conte now. Or, or no, Sutton, still Sutton. They have a nine on their back. Tyrell Sutton, 19. Omar Conte, 29. And it looks like Coach Walker is going to well, Bazinet calls timeout, does he not? No, I think they're going to let it run they're out. They're going to let it run out. They'll regroup at halftime. They were down 14 to 3. 21 unanswered. Wow, look at and that. And at the top of our telecast, we, we highlighted the, uh, the battle of the little big men, Garrett Wolf of NIU. I think we hit the nail on the head. Yeah, Tyrell Sutton, the true freshman, and we'll see both of them. It is halftime here in Evanston. Northwestern with a 24-14 lead over NIU, and right now we go back to the studio. Matt Weinhardt and Jim Donovan, guys. Classic now, 7 p.m. weeknights on ESPN Classic. Do you believe in this? The curse of the Bambino? Oh. 
Fever pitch delivers a home run. I love the Red Sox are gonna win. On the way. This is not a man's closet. It's like you live in a gift shop. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. The greatest game ever. With an extended Boston Red Sox ending. Yeah, I like that a lot. How bad do you want it? Fever pitch. Own the Red Sox collector's edition Tuesday. Go Sox. Tonight on ESPN Classic at 8, take a look back at the 1985 NBA Finals between the Lakers and the Celtics. At 9, Classic drive through cranks up the engine with the thrilling 1991 Haynes 500. At 11, relive the excitement of the 2004 World Series of Poker. And a reminder, every weeknight at 7, Classic Now takes today's sports stories and looks at them through the eyes of yesterday. Classic Now with host Josh Elliott, only on ESPN Classic. The Big Ten Conference was moved to action by the devastation visited on the people of the Gulf Coast region by Hurricane Katrina. In the spirit of public service and friendship, Big Ten institutions have opened their doors to students displaced by this disaster and have responded with a variety of financial initiatives intended to support the victims. I encourage everyone in the Big Ten family to continue their generosity as our fellow citizens rebuild their homes and communities. Own a timeshare, turn it into cash. Timeshares only got us our full asking price before our next monthly payment was due. Own a campground membership, turn it into cash. Timeshares only sold our campground membership fast and for the price we wanted. Call now and we'll send you absolutely free this information kit, including 10 secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares. Timeshares only is the nation's largest, number one most successful timeshare agency. We represent properties from the biggest names in the timeshare industry. When it comes to selling, renting, or buying timeshares, no one comes close to timeshares only. With over $2 billion of timeshares sold in the last six months, now's the perfect time to sell, rent, or buy. And no one sells more timeshares than we do. You owe it to yourself to work with the best. Timeshares only, the most trusted name in timeshares. Call 1-800-576-0863 to sell, rent, or buy your timeshare and get your free information kit. Don't delay. Call 1-800-576-0863. Welcome to the ESPN Classic College Football Halftime Report. Back in our studios, Matt Weiner and Jim Donner. Well, the echoes aren't completely awake just yet in South Bend, but they may be stirring. Charlie Weiss became the first Irish coach to win his first two games on the road since Newt Rockney himself, and he did it in the big house. To Ann Arbor we go, number three, Michigan awaiting Coach Weiss and his Irish. First quarter, scoreless, first and goal at the five for Notre Dame. Brady Quinn to Raymond McKnight for the touchdown. 7-0 Irish on a 12-play drive, Coach. Seven, or excuse me, six passes, six rushes. 7-3 Irish, second and goal. Quinn's pass then tipped to Jeff Samarja for the touchdown. Irish up 14-3 at the break. Third quarter, second and nine. Chad Henney picked off by Tom Zibadowski at the goal line, and this was a huge problem for Michigan. Turnovers in the red zone. Just couldn't punch it in, and right here, they fumble the quarterback center exchange, and it gets under review, and it's the right kind of review. Here's the guy with the ball. you got to give it to Notre Dame. Yeah, it took them quite a while to figure that out. Eventually, they made the right call. Irish ball in the 20, but Michigan... At it again, it's Henny up top to Mario Manningham, who got behind the safeties. Michigan cuts the lead to just seven. But on fourth and 15, last chance, ball dropped. Notre Dame hangs on to win it 17 to 10. They are 2-0 for the first time since 1993. Henny had to throw it 45 times, in large part because Michael Hart was unavailable, just three rushes with a hamstring issue. Darius Walker on the other hand, 103 yards on the ground. Much of that happened in the first half. First win at Michigan for Notre Dame since 1993. Bob Stoops trying to avoid an 0-2 start for Oklahoma for the first time since 1996. Adrian Peterson, he got the ball a lot in this game. And doing a lot of work for the sophomore. He went over 2,000 yards for his career in this game. He would score in a one-yard run to make it 7-0 OU. But Paul Smith evading the rush, finds Euro Parrish. Headed toward the end zone, lost his helmet for his effort and didn't quite make it in. They would settle for a field goal, but take a 9-7 lead. 
Well, this is vintage Adrian Peterson uh, running the outside zone play and trying to stay in bounds. Uh, they got to have more big plays out of the running game because right now they can't throw the ball. He had 58 yards on six carries on that drive, eventually punched it in himself to make it 14-9 Sooners. Paul Smith to Garrett Mills. He fumbles. Ryan Bug of Tulsa recovers at the goal line. They get a big break. And next play, it's Smith. And like Bob Bieber, he's doing it himself. Two-point conversion is not good. Oklahoma hanging on to a 17-15 lead in the fourth, and then more AP. Oh, you didn't throw one pass in the second half, and, and until they can throw the ball to their team, they, they probably don't need to. Red Bomar, the freshman, got the start, went just 5 of 13. As you mentioned, didn't attempt to pass in the second half. He also had two picks. That's been a problem for Oklahoma in the first two games. Turnovers for them, 31 to 15 was the final, but another scare for OU. <laughs> Northwestern leads it by 10 on their home field, 24-14. We'll get to our game day guys in Columbus right after this. Why go so far as to equip a sedan with a smoother riding double wishbone front suspension, 235 horsepower V6, and electronic stability control? Because instead of cutting corners, we'd rather take them. The all-new, highly agile 2006 Sonata, a Hyundai like you've never seen before. Hey, Mitch. Want to smell my cast? You've lost a powerful ally. Imagine if you were like Mitch and had access to a million songs. Say, Mitch, you think I can get those status reports I asked for? Mitch, I'm serious. With Napster's 30-day free trial, you can be like Mitch. That's unlimited access to a million songs, free to check out for 30 days. It's easy. Just sign up at napster.com slash TV. Remember, 30 days is just the start to a whole lot of music. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without Hi, guess what day today is? It's Wednesday. Discover all the music you want at napster.com slash TV. Welcome back to the ESPN Classic Halftime Show. I'm Matt Weiner. Everything happening this afternoon, all prelude to one of the bigger non-conference early season matchups in recent memory. Number two, Texas. Number four, Ohio State. Six Heisman trophies between them, but their first ever meeting on the football field. Tickets on eBay going for upwards of $1,500. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Street. they didn't need a ticket. They're there with our game day crew. Well, folks here have waited nine and a half months for this first ever showdown between Texas and Ohio State. 102,000 under the lights here. Only about 4,000 wearing burnt orange. Lee Corso and Kirk Street join me. This will be a lot of fun tonight. A real treat yeah. for football fans. The winner should be a clear number two in the polls behind USC. Talented playmakers all over the field. Ohio State has the more experienced group. But at quarterback, Texas has the more settled situation. It's going to be Vince Young all the way. He's taking the team on his back. They adopt his personality. Ohio State, on the other hand, Justin Zwick and Troy Smith, they're going to have that quarterback tandem, and there's some mystery about how Trestle might use those guys. But again, the big uglies yeah. might decide this, Lee. Up front, Texas has got an advantage up front. Offensively, the Texas offensive line outweighed a Buckeyes defensive line by 30 pounds per man. I would not be surprised if they didn't try to pound the Buckeyes and get them in the fourth quarter and get them tired, running those big running backs on them, and then bringing Young to the outside. That's an advantage 
I'm telling you, they got a lot of power up there. Well, I think Ohio State is going to be so energized by the crowd. They're going to be flying up to the line of scrimmage to try to negate that running game. The big thing will be, can they pressure Vince Young? Can they contain Vince Young? That's obvious for any team that ever goes up against Vince Young. Vince Young's ability to make so many plays. This is against Michigan last year. They contained him, but they left lanes open for him to run into, cut right up through the middle, big seams. That's what Oklahoma had success doing last year, bringing that same pressure from the outside, which Ohio State will try to duplicate, but look at the push from the interior. That's how you slow down Vince Young, not only containing, but getting a good push from the inside. If they can do that, they can stop him. Watch the speed of Ohio State linebackers and safeties. A lot of them are going to try to mirror Vince Young to try to so, slow down that speed. Boy, they are motivated to send Young home a Heisman <laughs> non-candidate. That's what Bobby Carpenter has talked about. What else are we watching for here? Well, as I said, I think the stadium is a big issue. If this game were played in Austin, I think we'd all think, at least I'd think, that Texas would win this game. The fact that it's being played in Columbus at night will energize the Ohio State defense. I think they've heard about Vince Young since the Rose Bowl and his performance against Michigan. They're very motivated, very keyed up. I think they'll surprise people outside of the state of Ohio with the speed that they have as a group on the defensive side. I like Ohio State's defense and Troy Smith to win the game. I agree with you on every single point except instead of Troy Smith, I'm taking Teddy Ginn Jr. Okay. Choo -choo -choo -choo. Boom. Ohio State wins it because it's here, just like Kirk. Well, State. Texas has won 21 out of 22 on the road. Vince Young very loose and relaxed yeah. today. Never lost a start at night. So there's a collision of all these trends and yeah. streaks, and it'll be a whole lot of fun here in the old horseshoe in the banks of the old Intangi and Prime Time on ABC tonight. That's the story for now from Columbus. Let's go back to the studio. All right, guys, thanks very much. Vince Young, 18-2, and two, was a starter and referenced this game as motivation for his teammates during summer workouts. It happens tonight, ABC, 8 Eastern, the Horns and the Buckeyes, ABC. Built strong. Built comfortable. Built right. Wrangler five star premium denim jeans. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Introducing E Trade Complete. Control your financial world from one page and maximize the potential value of every dollar. In other words, be master of your domain. E Trade Financial. Be extraordinary. With the new Sprint, now I can talk in the largest network with no roaming charges. Now I can talk as much as I want with no huge overages. Now I can get all my incoming calls free. So everyone's in my free calling network. Lots of different plans. For lots of different people. Because if we were all the same as everyone else, it would be creepy. Together, Sprint and Nextel give you more choice in plans than any other wireless company. Starting at just $34.99 a month. Call 800-SPRINT-1 now. NIU, serving the heart of America's heartland. Educating new leaders for the nation's third largest region. Bringing expertise and innovation to communities and public schools. Creating new jobs and new workers. Conducting research that improves our quality of life. Northern Illinois University. Across the region, from Chicago to the Mississippi, NIU works. What if is not a priority. What if never gets the time of day? What if always takes a back seat to how was work? In fact, the only time what if gets any attention at all is when what if becomes why us? Find out why millions turn to American Family Insurance. A little peace of mind for less than you'd expect. American Family Insurance. You know, with most wireless companies, you don't just get charged for calls you make on your cell phone. You also get charged for calls you receive. Did you just make that face? That, huh? You made that up. What? I didn't know that face. Well, at U.S. Cellular, you don't get charged for incoming calls. Did you just make that other face? That, I think I'm going to switch face. With unlimited call me minutes, there's no charge for incoming calls. U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. Right now, get unlimited local call me minutes on plans $39.95 and higher. It is halftime here in Evanston. The Northwestern Wildcats leading the Northern Illinois Huskies 24-10. You know, back in 1995, Northwestern football ca captured the net. Can we do that again? No. 
as the little train that could when they opened their 95 season by bumping off Lou Holtz Notre Dame team. We asked coach Gary Barnett to look back at that Cinderella season when they swept the Big Ten crown 10 years ago. This team had a really great attitude, and I did, I really did firmly believe that we were going to break out and have our first winning season in, in a while. We had a couple of great leaders on that football team, and uh, it, you could just feel it all growing together. Exactly 10 years and one week ago today, the Northwestern football program began their impossible, unbelievable, and unthinkable climb to the top of the Big Ten in a trip to the Rose Bowl. At the beginning of the 95 season, the Wildcats from Evanston, Illinois, were thought of as the doormats of the Big Ten Conference. Since 1992, when Coach Gary Barnett took over the program, their records were 3-8, and 2-9, and nine, and 3-7. and seven. To this day, the Cats still hold the NCAA Division I record for most consecutive losses at 34. In this one shining season, Northwestern would upset their longtime tormentors and grab the Big Ten crown with a near-perfect 10-1 record and take the purple to Pasadena. We talked to Coach Barnett on the eve of the 10th anniversary of the improbable run, a campaign that began with a stunning upset victory at Notre Dame. Fake to Autry. Schnurr rifles it, complete the Bates. Touchdown. Paul is sacked. Schnurr's pass, corner of the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. A shocking outcome and the season opener for the Irish, but you've got to be happy for those guys. This has got to send a message to everybody that, that our kids can play with anybody, and I think we just did. The Notre Dame game sort of thrust us into the national limelight where we had not been for a while, for a long time. Uh, that, that sort of got us over the edge and told us we can do anything we want to do. The Michigan game gave us the confidence that the Big Ten was within our grasp. That was a turning point for us, not just winning, have a winning season, but maybe doing the whole thing. I wore my lucky shoes. I told you last night that we came in here to win it, and what an effort by our defense. I'm just so proud of those players. The Penn State game was, if you ask every one of our players, that was probably one of the most exciting games that they'd ever been in their lives. Darnell played like a man possessed. He was truly a, a wonderful football player. He was a gamer. The impossible, the unbelievable, the unthinkable dream of dreams has come true. The Northwestern Wildcats, 8-0, unbeaten in the Big Ten. We came here and made a promise one day that we'd take the purple to Pasadena, and we're going. This is Hanson McCoy. I knew the game was going to be hard. I knew it was going to be a battle, but I also felt like uh, we had so much confidence and uh, so many things going for us and such a great group of kids. And it's Darnell Autry, touchdown! There were some real situations that happen in football games. The breaks, the balls bounce the wrong way, or official makes a call that, you know, could go either way and it doesn't go your way, it goes the other way. And we had a couple of those plays in the game. And he hit the upright, no good! We had a key touchdown. Uh, right at the end of the fourth quarter, it was called back for a holding call. And uh, that would have put us in great position. Keyshawn Johnson had a great game. He's got it. He's gone. Got 11 or 12 balls and a couple for long touchdowns. And you know what? They had the kind of game that we'd been having all year. This team wasn't going to let that game completely tarnish what they'd accomplished. They knew what they'd done. They knew what they were about as a football team. They were not going to be defined by that Rose Bowl game. This game will go into the history books with a final score of Southern California 41, Northwestern 32. You know, what it says to me is that uh, your circumstance in life is not permanent. It's whatever you choose to make it. And those kids chose to change their lives and change the situation. And uh, it was hard, and we fought all the odds, but you can do it. Northwestern went to subsequent bowl games, but Coach Gary Barnett is back at the University of Colorado. 
but how sweet it was back in 1995 when he took the purple to Pasadena. Back with the second half kickoff right after this. and reggae, helping our white friends dance for over 70 years. Red Stripe, it's beer. Hooray, beer. Attention football fans, can't get enough NFL this season? Follow your team and the entire NFL through the pages of Sports Illustrated. SI gives you the insight and analysis every fan wants with award-winning writing, spectacular photos, and coverage of all your favorite sports. Plus, as part of this special offer, you will also get a Team Choice NFL fleece jacket with the logo of your favorite team, and this Team Choice NFL tee in the color of your favorite team. Both are free when you order 56 issues of Sports Illustrated illustrated for only $1.59 an issue, a savings of over 60% off the cover price. Use your credit card for faster delivery and get a free NFL team hat. Call now and gear up in support of your favorite team with the officially licensed Team Choice NFL fleece jacket, t-shirt, and hat all free when you order a year of Sports Illustrated. Call 1-800-835-9500. That's 1-800-835-9500. Or order online at sinflorder.com. Big Ten football is a special tradition. More than five and a half million fans pack our stadiums each year, making Big Ten football what it is today. So respect the game and show good sportsmanship because the Big Ten sets an example for everyone to follow. Before, during, and after the game. Big Ten football. Good sports make great fans. 24-14 the score here in Evanston, Illinois. The Northwestern Wildcats leading Northern Illinois by 10 as we begin the third quarter of play. Northwestern will receive set to kick off for Northern Illinois, Chris Nendick. And back deep for the Cats. Tyrell Sutton and Omar Conte. But this is Jared Hamlet who gets the ball at number 23. He's across the 30-yard line before being knocked out of bounds. Statistically, he gained 28 yards on that kickoff return. Uh, rushing belongs to Northwestern. Passes belong to Northwestern. Uh, I'm not sure there's any one thing except that momentum seems to have swung to the side of, of Northwestern, Brian Kitchen. Well, it surely has. They are both their young running backs have done an excellent job moving the football on the ground. And Northwestern continuing to run the football. The give to Sutton. Gain of two. On the afternoon in just the first half, 19 carries, 135 yards. Averaging, that's what's really impressive, the 7.1 yards per carry. Hard to lose with those numbers. Three wide receivers to the top of your screen as Bazinet rolls in that direction and finds one of them, number one, Jonathan Fields, the second leading receiver. You know what? When you're 18, 19 years old and just a true freshman, you're not supposed to be able to do this, but Tyrell Sutton is the complete package and it really has a knack for finding the open spaces. Well, I can tell you one thing. I know the video people like him because they don't have to look real hard to find a highlight. Every time he touches it, he's a highlight. Even when it looked like something bad was going to happen when Bassinet fumbled the ball down as they were going into the goal line, the ball bounced up in Sutton's hand, and he went in for the touchdown. Bassinet. Nice play there by number 34, Kenny West. He was the one guy on the Northern Illinois defense that wasn't fooled. Well, it's funny. That's the third play of this drive, and it's the same play they ran two plays ago. They can take the, wide, the two wide receivers on the outside and run them up the field and run their inside guy on a little flat route about five yards deep. Bazinet rolls to him, and it's about a 10-yard throw. West put pressure on him there. He couldn't get it very where he wanted to go, though. Bassinet's numbers on the afternoon, 108 yards on 10 for 17. 
That time, oh, Sean Herbert had it in his hands and a step on the receiver. My bad. I don't know, Sean might be renamed. Steady Eddie. Not living up to it, is he? Dropped one early in the ball game. Keenan Blaylark on the number 33 on the coverage there, a junior from Elgin, Illinois, went to Elgin Lark in high school, one of the 65 or so players on this Northern Illinois roster from the immediate, or not the immediate, but the greater Chicago area. Bassinet again, the lone setback in the five wide receiver set dimension of this spread offense, and this one he has to throw away again. Ken West, number 34, applying the pressure from the outside. NU's offensive line not able to control it. And so Northwestern on this first series of the second half will have to punt. Well, Brian, we saw Northwestern down 14 to 3, and then all of a sudden take control of the football game and, and go ahead. Is Northern Illinois, do you think, capable of doing the same thing here in the second half? Well, they would have had to get a real good pep talk out of their coach, get their spirits back up, because they sure were lacking late in the half, but with a nice little return to set them up for their first offensive series doesn't hurt. But I just really believe that when you when you don't have the depth, when you don't have the athletes, it's, it's very difficult against a team like Northwestern, who's a big-time major college football program to be able to maintain that momentum, especially when you lose it so badly as they did at the end of the half last half. 45-yard punt by Ryan Peterson, a 16-yard return and a nice one by Chatone Powers, a senior three-year letterman from Broadview, Illinois, played his high school football at Riverside Brookfield. Lone setback for the Huskies at Garrett Wolf, who had an outstanding first half. He's their bread and butter guy, and they go to him again. He cuts back against the grain behind that zone blocking scheme that they use at Northern. Well, Northern Illinois likes to run the football. They've had that thousand yard rusher for eight of the last 10 years. They like to put it on the ground. They like to control the football game. But the problem is when you get down 10 points to a team like Northwestern, you can still stay with your, your game plan, especially early in the first half. But the longer the game goes and, you, and your deficit remain, remains the same, you're going to have to do something else to catch up in this ball game. You cannot expect to continue to keep the ball on the ground, expect your defense to stop them and be able to win this football game. And another Husky on the ground. This is a starting right tackle, John Brost, a freshman from Maple Grove, Minnesota. Brian Van Acker, their starting center, has already left the game. And he is being helped off the field. So Mike Adamley along with Brian Kinchin here in Evanston, Illinois, as Northwestern leads Northern Illinois 24 14. Their first meeting since 2000, the opener back at Bryan Field for Northwestern back then. Northwestern a 35 17 winner. Garrett Wolf, 125 yards. Tyrell Sutton, 136. And wide open in the seam, Chaton Powers. Phil Horvath with a nice touch there. Gain of 33. They must have been listening to me down on the field. You can't win ball games on the ground if you're behind. Great job on the slot receiver just running up the field. Bad coverage, really, leaving the inside open. Horvath makes a good throw. Looked like a coverage mistake. He was so wide. Chateau Powers was so wide open. To get the wolf. He started right now going all the way left, and you can see some of that 4-4 four, four speed that he has. That's football speed, folks. You just can't teach that nine yards on a run that probably covered about 39 yards. This was Garrett in the first half. You can see how he gets to the flank so quickly. And then his ability to break tackles. Well, just watch how under control he is. He just, he just plots his way, moving in and out laterally, all he needs to do to get open. And all those moves are made on the move. That's what's special about him. Well, he never stops. He just, he just glides along, looks so pretty running. So Northern with a wonderful opportunity here on their first possession of the second half. They've got a first and 10 at the Northwestern 26-yard line. Horvath, the pitch to Garrett. 
And again, he gets gets outside, but that time Northwestern able to contain him. Deontay Battle, sophomore, pushes him out of bounds after a gain of three. Now, one thing that uh, coaches like to preach is carry the ball away from the pressure. And he's got it in his left hand, which should be in his other arm, should be in his right arm. That is a fundamental flaw. You need to get it away from the defense so your free hand is able to stiff arm and press off defenders. When the ball is to the defense, not only does it expose it to getting hit by a hat and coming loose, but you don't have anything to protect yourself with. You've got to have a free arm. Still, this guy has come out of the box strong in two weeks, last week against Michigan and today. Yeah, I think they'll take the wrong hand in, <laughs> in the production, huh? I'm not worried about that flaw, but he might have had two more yards if he could get in that stiff arm. You're right, Brian. Horvat, that little dump pass across the middle. The umpire might have been on the way on that one. It was behind Chatone Powers. Good coverage by the Cats. Eddie Simpson there, number 40. Horvath throwing off his back foot as he's, as he's retreating, almost like a fadeaway jumper. That was a fadeaway pass. You can't be accurate. You can't put anything on it when you're doing that. Northwestern a year ago started the season 1-3, or was 1-3 against non-conference opponents, I should say, and it really hurt them when it came time to nail down a bowl bid. They lost that key non-conference game against Hawaii. They don't want to lose a non-conference game here against Northern, especially a game that they're in control of at the moment. 11.41 remaining here in the third quarter. A lot of football to be played, and Northern trying to make a statement to get back in this football game. When you talk about that loss to Hawaii, the non-conference record last year lost to TCU as well. Not very good last year. Wanted, wanted to talk to Randy Walker about that, but our conversation never got to football, so we never got around to it. Third down and eight to go for the Northern Illinois Huskies at the Northwestern, just inside the Northwestern 35-yard line. Horvath from the shotgun and wide open across the middle. The backup quarterback, Britt Davis, he's going to take this one to the house, but there's a flag on the play at about the 10-yard line. Britt Davis, a redshirt freshman from Riverside Brookfield High School, gain of 34 yards and a touchdown, but there is a flag on the play, and it's against the Huskies. Novath can't believe it. Holding number 84 offense. That marked off 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. Senior wide receiver Sam Hurd, and you can read Joe Novak's lips. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Penalty. Still got some yards out of it, though. Yeah. So now it is third down and four. Ball resting at the Northwestern 20. To Wolf. And he is pulled down after a gain of two. Number 72, David Engeni is there. So is Tim McGargle, as usual. Where was the hole here? Let's watch it right there, bottom of your screen. Sam Hurd holding and pushing number 20, Marquise Cole. It's a simple little rule right there. When they get away from you and your arms extend, let go. I know it's hard. It's a very difficult thing to do, especially when the ball's moving away from you. You've got to learn not to do silly, stupid things like that. Cost your team six points. And after that gain of three, NIU going for it on fourth and one. They give it to Wolf. He's got the running room, he's got the first down, and then some finally knocked out of bounds by Eddie Simpson. Gain of six. First down, Huskies. Where was he carrying it that time? Inside, outside arm. Does, doesn't matter with this kid. Well, he gets the first down, that's all that matters right now. That's a big play for him, though. Keep the drive alive. They need to put points on the board. Stay in this ball game. Wolf now out. A.J. Harris in the big back. Yeah. 
to give the Harris right up the middle. That was pure power football. They had Brandon Davis in the game. Didn't get a chance to talk to Horvath yesterday. We talked to Bazinet about how much how much freedom does he have to check off plays at the line of scrimmage. But we saw Horvath doing that. It was probably a check of me, either strong or weak. And he was giving the signals to the wide receiver to know where the play was going. And they had their H back in there as sort of a lead blocker. You can see him there at the bottom of your screen right now. Straight ahead play again, touchdown. Boy, that was easy. Wow. Well, they needed something to get going. Six points will do it. Wondering what's happening to Northwestern out the gate. Even earlier in the half, last time, it just seemed to be in a lull. Like, they don't believe these guys are for real. And then I think they've fallen back into that same mode, thinking 10-point lead, momentum's on our side. They sure came out and got gashed. Well, any thoughts that this Northern Illinois Husky team was out of gas and not in shape to play all four quarters, guess again, because they just went right down the field. 24-21, they cut the lead to three. We'll be back with more. Northwestern versus Northern Illinois, ESPN Classic. You want it live? We've got it. Tomorrow's Classics now on ESPN Classic. Touchdown, Wildcat! Catch the cadets of Army as they take on Baylor, followed by the Hoosiers versus the Kentucky Wildcats. Next Saturday, starting at 3 Eastern, live on ESPN Classic. You come out of the huddle, and you go, where's 92? Reggie White. He was football's minister of defense. Right before the snap, Reggie said, here comes Jesus. Restore the franchise. The Vince Lombardi Trophy is coming home. But did all his sermons hit the right note? Homosexuality is a decision. It's not a race. And then he was gone. I was just crying and crying and crying. I kept asking, what happened? Sports Century, Reggie White. 8 p.m. Monday on ESPN Classic. Built strong. Built comfortable. Built right. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Who says you were out of shape? Go to eat. Front end pedestrian safety system. Just one of 120 not-so-standard features available on the all-new German-engineered Passat. Touchdown! Lily, I'm home. Three depositions and an emergency brief to file. So, how was your day? Too busy to meet people? Call It's Just Lunch. We'll personally match you with someone who shares your interests, then make all the arrangements for lunch or drinks after work. It's just lunch is a terrific thing for people that are busy. You basically show up. It's effortless. It's easy. I just got tired of the bar scene. Now's the time to let It's Just Lunch match you up with someone new. Call now, 1-800-99-LUNCH. How do you get to Evanston? We'll just take Lakeshore Drive North alongside Lake Michigan and Lincoln Park there, and it'll take you about 11 minutes from that point in where we're showing you right now. If there's no traffic, that is. Band day here at Ryan Field in Evanston. The Northwestern Wildcats nursing now a 24-21 lead as the Northern Illinois Huskies have answered the call. Gerard Hamlet breaks a tackle across the 20 out to the 27-yard line before he's finally stopped, and that's where Brett Bazinet and company will begin their second series of this second half. Stats pretty even as far as total yardage is concerned. Not a whole lot of stuff happening through the air. Quarterbacks, either because of ineptness or the pressure they're getting. Both men, Horvath and Bazinet, content to let the running backs do most of the hero work. Tyrell Sutton for NU and Garrett Wolf for NIU. This time, the, that little screen pass out to the wide receiver, Jonathan Fields. A gain of nine. Very effective, as you noted earlier. Yeah, pass that we saw on the first play of the last series when they just flips it out, a 10-yard throw, a very comfortable throw. Two wide receivers become lead blockers. Gain almost 10 on it. 
Ray Smith number 48 playing in a lot of pain in fact a lot of people didn't think he'd be able to play this afternoon Jonathan Fields down on the ground right now and you can't afford to lose so that was one of their deepest positions wide receiver but they lost Kim Thompson for this game number 84 he is out with a broken finger in his right hand scheduled to have surgery but they expect him back maybe next week. Mark Fillmore maybe their best receiver is nicked up we haven't called his name too many times they've got a freshman Rashid Ward Sean Herbert steady Eddie is not been real steady it hasn't been real steady so this could be a big loss if he can't come back into the game and you see number 48 Ray Smith there getting there late he's got that hip pointer and probably one of the reasons why Jonathan Fields let's hope he's okay we'll get his condition after this timeout from Evanston Sports Century Reggie White Monday I'm Josh Elliott. Join me for Classic Now, where we take today's breaking sports news and give it to you with a deep perspective and backstory. Classic Now, where the past is always present. 7 and 11 p.m. every weeknight, only on ESPN Classic. You're pretty. Waiting long? Yeah, and I'm late. No car, huh? Uh-uh. Bad credit. Uh, I got a car. Hey. Can't get financing. Sure you can. It's easy. Just call 1-800-BAR-NONE. If you need car financing, even if you have bad credit, 1-800-BAR-NONE could get you approved in minutes. 1-800-BAR-NONE? You can? I am? Really? Scintillating. Need a car? Call 1-800-BAR-NONE. Everyone deserves a second chance. Bar none. Call now. Hey, Mitch. Want to smell my cast? No smell so close to me. You've lost a powerful ally. Imagine if you were like Mitch and had access to a million songs. Say, Mitch, you think I can get those status reports I asked for? Shut up, just shut up, shut up. Mitch, I'm serious. With Napster's 30-day free trial, you can be like Mitch. That's unlimited access to a million songs, free to check out for 30 days. It's easy. Just sign up at napster.com slash TV. Remember, 30 days is just the start to a whole lot of music. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without Hi, guess what day today is? It's Wednesday. Discover all the music you want at Napster.com slash TV. Nine oh four remaining here in the third quarter. Northwestern with a 24-21 lead over Northern Illinois. Jonathan Fields walking off the field under his own power after that gain of nine yards. Sutton uses that arm as sort of like a third leg to break a tackle and keep his balance across the 40. He goes to about the 44-yard line. He picks up another first down, gain of seven. Talk about talk about being a finisher. We talked about it earlier in the intro. Randy Walker loves guys like that who will not go down. This is one of those kids. Watch. Any other anybody else is down. He, he uses his hand, stays up, gets yards, refuses to go down. You gotta love that. That's football at its finest. Bazinet fakes the handoff this time to and takes it himself, rolling to his right, throwing on the run, completion and another first down. But a flag on the play back at the 46 yard line after the game of 22. Illegal man downfield. Penalty flag on the play. What a shame, though. Beautiful ball by Bazinet. Just perfect spot right in the back. On the offense. That's a five yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Is the center. Well, he says five yard penalty. It's a 25 yard penalty after the end result of that pass. That was the center, Austin Matthews. Young kid coming Shaking in his relief. head. Yeah. Yep. He started the season, but he's taking over for the incumbent starter, Trevor Reese, who was suspended because of academic reasons. Now in first and 15, they run the screen. There's Gerard Hamlet. He's got the first down, I think. He almost broke that last tackle by number 53, Tim McCarthy. He might have gone the distance. Well, that'll make up for the penalty. Beautiful little 
Quick screen here. Ran it earlier. Three linemen out front leading the way. Beautiful job getting down the football field, getting the first down, knowing where the sticks are. Just when we're ready to write Brett Bazinet off, he does something good. He's made two good quality throws. Of course, the screen's an easy one. Sutton, no, no. Hamlet, the ball carrier. Gerard Hamlet, a redshirt freshman from Fort Lauderdale, who was 11 of 41 last week. Against the Highland. Next Saturday, ESPN Classic has a full afternoon of live college football action. First at 3 p.m. Eastern, the Baylor Bears head to West Point to take on Bobby Ross's Army Black Knights. Then at 6.45 Eastern, the Kentucky Wildcats are in Bloomington to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. College Football Live on ESPN Classic Saturday next week. Second and six. Sutton again. The high steps, the missed tackles on the part of Northern Illinois. Another first down. Just straight ahead. Can't bring him down with an arm. He's got the size and power just to run right through that. Everybody's trying to reach out and stop him. One, two. Can't do that. Got to get your body across, get your hat across him. Fundamentals of football. How many times have we talked about that? 155 in the afternoon, which surpasses already what he did last week in a, an entire game when he had his first 100-yard game in his first college appearance. Bassinet rolling to his right, and he finds Jonathan Field, and another late hit, another stupid penalty, that time by T.J. Griffin. It's the second time Northern has done that. This spread offense is tough enough to defend against without you helping it with penalties like that. Yeah, that's not smart, but again, we play personal foul, late hit, number 43 on the defense. That penalty is enforced, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Wow, half the distance to the goal. And he, he comes from a long way to make this. He's five game. yards away from him when he's out of bounds. He's just looking to hit anybody. Man, come on, be smart, brother. Wow, look at that. Joe Novak doesn't want to look at it anymore. Cats in business deep in Northern Illinois territory. And that swing pass out to Eric Peterman. Gains about four yards before he's knocked out of bounds. Well, the thing to me, Bazinet, this guy is the second leading active passer in the country, and he's only behind Charlie Whitehurst from Clemson, and he's the head of line from USC. We had a chance to visit with him. I really enjoyed talking with him. He's a tough kid, too. Came back from a broken leg his, his freshman year after being redshirt. Came back and played. Played with a dislocated shoulder last season. He's, a, he's your dream kind of quarterback. He believes in hard-nosed football. And watching lots and lots of game film. Sutton, touchdown, his third of the game. He makes it look so easy. This kid is, you know, Randy Walker's biggest concern is how do we replace Noah Heron? Noah Heron was one of the best backs he had ever coached. He said, we're going to be young, but we're going to have some talent back there. And they've start, they were going to start a kid named Brandon Roberson, who did last week. He was in for about three plays and then hurt himself. We've seen him a couple times today. But that man took over, Tyrell Sutton, and he has become the coach's favorite because all he does is gain positive yards. Joel Howells on for the extra point. It is up. It is good. So Northwestern answers Northern Illinois. Touchdown with a touchdown of their own 31-21. They open up a 10-point lead with 6-35 remaining here in the third quarter. How did they do it? Just give it to Tyrell Sutton. I'm Dale Hart Jr. Welcome to a new generation of Wranglers. New fits. New comfort. New styles. Wrangler Jeans Company. A new generation of Wrangler. New fits. New comfort. New styles. Be frugal. Be decisive. Be opportunistic. Be powerful. In other words, be extraordinary. Power E-Trade Pro. Radically upgraded and now with low pricing for stock and options trades. At E-Trade Financial, we keep challenging the ordinary to help investors be extraordinary. 1963. Andy Kaufman with 14 strikeouts. The 2-2 pitch to Bright is one on it. Classic. 
good health, I like to stay in shape. And speaking of shapes, check out the shape of our Craftmatic adjustable bed. Actually, if you're not in such great shape and suffer from any of these painful health problems, a Craftmatic bed with optional heat and massage may provide temporary relief. Even to the not-so-physically-fit among us. Affordable? You bet. Our Craftmatic Model 2 cost up to 56% less than all these quality flatbeds. No kidding. Up to 56% less. If you're concerned about the shape you're in, call toll-free and get this free Craftmatic catalog by mail. You'll also receive this special $200 off rebate certificate. Good for $200 off the Craftmatic Model 1 bed of your choice. To receive everything free... Call toll-free. There's absolutely no obligation. Call toll-free 1-800-883-5995. That's 1-800-883-5995. Call toll-free 1-800-883-5995. talking earlier, Mike was talking about what they didn't know what they were going to do, but you know, you see it all the time, freshmen coming in, they're highly touted about what they did in high school, and you never really know. This guy got a chance to get on the football field last week, and he, he showed them that he was the real deal. Because you just never know. Kids take a couple years to develop, but this guy came right out of the gates, just scorching him. Tyrell Sutton, the true freshman from Akron, Ohio, will get a rest as Northern Illinois Goes on offense after this return by A.J. Harris. Bazinet after a couple of passes to set things up. Three straight runs by Tyrell Sutton. Here's a kid who in high school. Let's count the, break, the yeah. broken tackles. There's I mean, there, two right there. There's at least two, if not three. There's another two right on this run right here before three taken down. And then here's the touchdown. And he really goes through a couple of people here, right there. One, two, three arms. I mean, it's amazing. That's eight missed tackles in third run. That's the thing, unbelievable. The thing that stands out, the legs are always moving. 22 carries, 162 yards. Averaging 7.4 yards per carry. Horvath, the bootleg. Almost intercepted by McGarrigal. What concentration. Tipped it right into the hands of number 86, the tight end, Jake Norton. And you're right, great concentration. That's staying focused, a tip drill. Everybody in the country does it. Here you see it up close and personal. Beautiful throws right on time. Just made a good play defensively. Just got to lock onto those arms. That's why they're probably on defense, because they can't catch, right? So instead of an interception or a second and ten at the very worst, they are now second and one. They give it to the Northern Illinois counterpart of Tyrell Sutton, Garrett Wolf, who is quietly having his own solid game. He got the first down. I love that ground level shot. Shows you how tall the kid is. Just right at the chest. Look at him behind number. I'm telling you. <laughs> duck, duck free. There is an All America candidate at the left tackle. He's 6'7, 302. Garrett, just 5'7, a full foot short. <laughs> that's, that's the point. You can't see him, and that's what makes it so tough for defenders. Once again, Nor Horvath going to the tight end, Jake Norton, and another Northern Illinois first down. They're down by 10. They know they have to respond. They do there with a gain of 13. I like what they're doing, though. They're giving Horvath a little short, little intermediate throws to make to the tight end. Your security blanket. And he's making the catches and getting the yardage, keeping the clock running, getting them, more importantly, down near the end zone where they've got to get to. you got to get at least 10. Tie this ball game up. Horvath getting a little breather on the sideline after his good deeds. Horvath oh, throws behind Britt Davis. He was wide open. Britt Davis, number seven, an extremely talented young man in his own right. He's the backup quarterback. This is the same kid that had the nice touchdown, got called back earlier. Great job on the hook route, just looking right back at Horvath. He throws it a little inside. Still the old rule of thumb, right? If you can touch it, you can catch it. Second and ten, Horvath rolling right, and he's got Pat Riley. Raleigh. Jake Norton's back up at tight end. 6'4", 240. Nine pounds senior. 
Coughed it up as he hit the turf. Fans disappointed, wanted to call that an incompletion, but he catches it two feet on the ground. He's already down right there, folks. Doesn't matter what happens to the football. I like what they're doing. They're running those boots. They're giving play action one way, bringing the quarterback out, keeping him moving, giving him nice little easy throws. Safest play in football right there, quarterback sneak. The other good thing about that bootleg, too, it gives Corbett, Corbett better vision of things and, and keeps him a little healthier, too, away from that Northwestern rush. Well, if you do it right and you sell that play action, the, the defense is flowing hard. And when you come back out, you got nothing in front of you. And they've been doing a great job of, of selling the flow the other way. Wolf. Sometimes you don't need to, to make commentary. There's nothing, watch, there's nothing to say. Just watch him run. It's a thing of beauty. I can tell you one thing I'm noticing. He's got that football tucked away, huh? Watch that baby. It doesn't even hardly move when he's running. He's got it so tucked in there. And he's carrying it in the correct arm. He heard you, Brian. <laughs> and it's not coming out. Away from the pressure. He got even got to use that stiff arm. That's right. He's listening to us up here in the booth. Gain of 19 for Garrett Wolf. Junior out of River Grove Holy Cross High School in Chicago. Wolf gets it again, follows his blocker. Pat Raleigh back up tight end with a good block. Mike Adamley, Brian Kitchen with you here at Evanston, Illinois. Ryan Field is Northwestern leads Northern Illinois 31 21 in a very competitive game. And the Huskies are on the move at the Northwestern 20 yard line with 336 remaining here in the third quarter. Wolf going to the sidelines, being replaced by A.J. Harris, the big bat. Tone pow powers the man in motion for the Huskies. Horvath pumps once. He's in a little bit of trouble. Now getting flushed out of the block pocket. Throws a wide, wild, wounded duck. Well, I think he thought about throwing the football about four different times on that play. I think he was lucky to get that thing out and on the ground without anybody picking that one off. Very, 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 very lucky. Here it is again. Well, he's thinking about throwing it there. Think about throwing it again. Finally gets it away. Again, violating that cardinal rule. Don't throw it off your back foot, especially like across the field. Across the both field. of those cardinal rules. Third down, seven Huskies. Big play here late in the third quarter. Northwestern with the blitz. He finds Brooke Davis across the middle. Bobbled the ball, but caught it. Marquise Cole on the coverage, but not enough for the first down. Only a gain of three. Well, they were third and about seven there, just kind of, they wanted to bring pressure. When you bring pre pressure, you man up. And with Marquise Cole covering him, guess what? He's not gonna get a step ahead of him. He's got way too much speed. And that bobble may have cost Britt Davis a first down there and allowed Marquise that closing speed to catch up and stop the first down. A 33-yard attempt now by Chris Nendick. Flags down the play. The kick is good. looks to be on Northwestern. Well, if it is, you're going to look at that decision. Illegal participation. 12 men on the field on uh -oh. defense. That penalty will be marked off half the distance to the goal. Well, here's the old thing. Do you take the three points off, take the first down, and try, try your luck? You pull to within seven. You're pulling points off the board. And you're taking points off the board. That's exactly what Joe Novak's going to do. Yep. He's going to roll the dice. 
you know, that's a tough thing because you've got to take the first down. But if something bad happens, they're going to look back and go, why did he take that first down and take yeah, those well, He's going to be criticized. He's right. be damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. As long as they can convert, he'll be okay. Well, but basically what he's saying to his offense, I've got confidence in you. First and seven. First and seven from... Nice. Well, seven yards. Well, that's that's why. why he took the he, first down. He's got a guy like Garrett Wolf in the backfield. Well, I tell you, it was a beautiful call, too. The delayed draw. Excellent call. He rolls Norvath short to the near side, hands it back to Wolf, lets him do his magic. Of course, he had a lot of help up front. Those big guys paving the way. They pounded out on Michigan's defense last week. Why should Northwestern be any different? Opening up massive holes for a young man to get through. I don't care how tall you are, you're going to see those, right? How about those numbers? We talked about man, that's Tyrell just, that's Sutton. Awesome. That is beyond that. 182 yards in the afternoon for Garrett Wolf. We got us a ball game here. 31-28, Northwestern, 151 remaining. The old coach, Joe Novak, cut his teeth at Miami of Ohio, the great old coaches. He says, I've got faith in you guys. I've got faith in the offensive lineman, and I definitely have faith in this man, Garrett Wolf. You know, it all started with people like Sid Gilman and Paul Brown and later... Bo Schembechler and Bill Mallory. Well, Joe Novak, the class of 1976, he was down there as a defensive coordinator and as linebacking coach. He also played for Bo Schembechler. Randy Walker played for Coach Dick Crum back and was a coach there. Those were his playing years, 1976 to 1977. They must be doing something right down there. It's amazing the number of coaches who have come from that school. Well, we were talking about that dynamic. <laughs> Gerard Hamlet on the kickoff return for the Northwestern Wildcats. Gets it out across the 20-yard line. Gain of 15 on that kickoff return. And Northwestern will put the ball in play. Well, we were talking to Coach Novak about that connection and, and what made that so special. And he said it was, it was more so probably the connections that everybody had. When they got jobs, they gave guys that they worked with their um, jobs on their staff and kind of helped each other out. Bassinet decides to keep the ball himself, looks the pitch. But again, the guy who blew that play up, we've called his name quite a few times now, Kenny West, number 34 out of Calumet City. Bassinet lucky to make a gain of three out of it. What do you what do you think he was thinking on that pitch? And with that run, he now owns the school record for total yardage, 8,072. The previous record held by Lenny Williams, who played quarterback here at Northwestern from 90 through 93. A little quick shovel pass inside to Tyrell Sutton. Gets about six more. Well, anybody who watched that game last week against Ohio University remembers that pitch that Bazinet threw, and their defender took it 70-plus yards. Dream play. I guarantee you that play was in his mind when he thought about pitching that football just a second ago because he was in about the exact same position, that defender, of snagging that ball out of the air and giving him another gift. The guy you're talking about, Deion Byram from Ohio University, broke Pittsburgh's back single-handedly last night with two interception returns. From That's touchdowns. right. That was the same kid. You're right. Bassinet with the fake and then rolling to his right. And his his passes, his touches, just just a bit off today. Well, he's, he, he's earlier he was kind of unsettled and, and was missing a, a few balls. I think they've done a great job to give him some short stuff, to give him some confidence. They're running that same identical route that they ran on both sides of the field with the outside two receivers, clear it out, and the slot guy goes underneath right on the flats, and it's a wide-open, easy throw for Bazinet as he just rolls to him. That one off the fingertips of Eric Peterman. Second and 10 Wildcats now. 103 remaining, third quarter. Baz, the drop play. And he gets about eight yards. Saturday night, 
college football action on ESPN continues at 9 Eastern as Les Miles and number five LSU. The Tigers take on the 15th ranked Arizona State Sun Devils in a meeting of two teams with national title hopes. A Arizona State LSU also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. College football primetime presented by Polaroid Saturday at 9 Eastern. Third down and one for the Wildcats. The waning seconds here of the third quarter. The give to Tyrell Sutton. T.J. Griffin tripped him up in his own backfield, but with that tremendous balance, I think he got the first down, and they're moving the chains he has. Here's a kid that gained 505 yards and eight touchdowns in a single game in high school. I, 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 I dare say that would be tough to do against air, Brian. But well, you were explaining that yesterday, and I, I couldn't agree more. That's hard just to run that far. I don't know if I could. <laughs> so Randy Wild Walker's Wildcats with a 31-28 lead as we move on to the fourth quarter. Who will own it, NIU or Northwestern? Back in a moment. Classic now, 7 p.m. weeknights on ESPN Classic. Shaving the old-fashioned way can be a pain in the neck. Triple head shavers are expensive and don't give you a real smooth shave. Now, Bell & Howell has gone one better with the ZX4 four-head shaver. Bell & Howell's first and only electric shaver with a revolutionary four-head shaving system. With the ZX4 shaver, you'll get a quicker, closer, more comfortable shave than ever before. And the ZX4 is only $29.95 through this exciting direct-to-the-customer TV deal. The ZX4 shaver is from Bell & Howell, so you know it's made of the highest quality. The secret of the ZX4 shaver is its four floating heads that cut more hairs with fewer strokes, while the stainless steel cutting blades get incredibly close to cut even the hardest to shave hairs. The result is the quickest, cleanest shave of your life, one that everyone will notice. The ZX4 is ergonomically designed to fit comfortably in your hand. It's fully rechargeable and holds an eight-hour charge for up to seven days. It even comes with a pop-up trimmer to keep sideburns, mustaches, and beards looking great. The ZX4 gets into those hard-to-reach areas, so you'll get the best shave you've ever had or your money back. Call now, and we'll include the Bell & Howell Ear & Nose Hair Trimmer, a $20 value at no extra charge. That's right, you get the revolutionary ZX4 forehead rechargeable shaver and the ear and nose hair trimmer, a $120 value, all for only $29.95. But wait, order right now and we'll give you a second ZX4 shaver absolutely free. You just pay shipping and handling. That's two ZX4 shavers and the ear and nose hair trimmer, a $220 value, all for only $29.95. Call now. To order your Bell & Howell ZX4 shaver and receive a second ZX4 shaver absolutely free and the nose and ear hair trimmer. Have your credit card ready and call toll free 1-800-669-2828. That's 1-800-669-2828. Should we start with a cocktail? I don't drink. Well then, how about a shrimp cocktail? I'm allergic to shellfish. How'd you say you knew my cousin? There's a better way to meet people. Call It's Just Lunch. We'll personally match you with someone who shares your interests, then make all the arrangements for lunch or drinks after work. It's Just Lunch is a terrific thing for people that are busy. You basically show up. It's effortless. It's easy. I just got tired of the bar scene. Let It's Just Lunch match you up with someone new. Call now, 1-800-99-LUNCH. About to begin the fourth quarter here at Evansville, Illinois. Northwestern leading NIU. 31-28, Mike Adamley alongside Brian Kinchin. You know, we started this telecast talking about the two running backs, Garrett Wolf and uh, Mr. Sutton of Northwestern. They haven't disappointed us. No, they haven't. And usually when you have this many points on the, on the scoreboard, it's not because they're running the football, it's because they're throwing it. It's a shooting match. But in this case, they're putting the ball on the ground and racking up some serious yards like we talked about they were going to do. And when you run like that, like these guys have, Wolf with 182 yards, Tyrell Sutton, 165. It opens up things for the play we just saw. Mark Fillmore gathering it in from Brett Bassinet, very close to a first down. I mean, look at those numbers. They're both averaging over seven yards a carry. That's, I mean, you could say that the pretty sloppy defense. But, Mark, I was going to say it's great for those running backs, but it doesn't say a whole lot about your defenses. 
They give it to Sutton again. This time he's got about three or four Huskies all over him. Number 51, Larry English. Well, I think this is about as a balanced ball game as you'll see, even defensively. I think they're just about equal. Offensively, they, they pretty much mirror each other. The fact that they run the football, the quarterbacks have really, neither one has separated themselves from the other. And I think now it's fourth quarter. You always hear about talking about who wants it more in the fourth quarter. I honestly believe that's what it's going to come down to is who wants to win this game more. Bassinet out to Sean Herbert. And it's uh, enough for the first down. Let's see where they spot the football just inside the Northern Illinois 45 yard line. So that will be a first down for the Cats. I'm telling you, that has been their bread and butter play. Again, they've got the three wide out to that side. They clear out the, the outside two, inside guy to the flats. It's a very simple route. It doesn't seem like Northern Illinois has been able to come up with anything to stop it. I'm like, what are their coaches seeing when they're sitting in this box next to us? Two wides at the top of your screen, two wides at the bottom. Gerard Hamlet, the lone setback, he gets the ball. Number 98, Eric Pittman, got a big paw on him to slow his progress, and he lost a yard. Pittman, 6'2", 265, a junior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And that's the guy I've been impressed with, number 34, Ken West from Calumet City. He has busted up a lot of Northwestern plays single-handedly. Second down, nine, Northwestern. 12.52 remaining here in the fourth and final quarter of play. We think it's the final quarter of play because you never know when you. Well, there's Dustin Utstick, and we looked at his stats from last week, and we asked the defensive coordinator, why is he your leading tackler? That's got to be a bad thing. But he told us that that's the way he designs his defense for him to play on that weak side, which is where he is, and he almost becomes an extra linebacker. And he will again today be their leading tackler. There he is, number 35. Junior from Wisconsin, and a very tough customer. Bassinet, all by himself in the backfield. There's that slant panel to Sean Herbert. Bounces his outside. If he can get that block there from number nine, Mark Miller has a chance to go even farther. He did. Very well designed, and it's very tough on defenders when the receivers come across the field like that. Well, they sure did. We've got a flag on the play. Looks like it might be another late hit. Just got through talking about Utstick, and, the, and sure enough, he's the guy who missed the open field play and could have stopped that for maybe a 10 or 15 yard game, but they ended up getting another 15 out of double their yardage. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, excessive celebration, number three on the offense. Wow. That is a 15 yard penalty. It will wow. be first and 10. Here we see us. Watch, here he comes up. All he's got to do is break it down. Gets overcommitted. Tries to make the arm tackle. We talked about that earlier. You can't bring down good runners with your arms. And here's the problem right here. Herbert Fields trying to tell him to yeah. stop. It was a little late, though. Son, this is okay in the NFL, but not in the... That's exactly... That's sadly, but true. It is. Yeah, yeah. That's sad, but true. This time going to Herbert again, and Herbert's going to make up for that mistake, making the tough catch in traffic, getting sandwiched by three different Huskies on that play after the gain of 12, first down and you. And Bassinet now closing in on the all-time passing yardage lead here at Northwestern. That one did. He now has surpassed Lenny Williams in that department. Now he's running the football. Goes head over heels on that run. Tripped up by Martin Wilson, the nose tackle for NIU, and also Utchick, Dustin Utchick, after the gain of seven. Ball resting at the NIU nine yard line. We're kind of seeing the same results that we saw late in the last half. NIU's defense was on the field, not being able to hold up. Looks like conditioning might be another issue here. 
Tyrell Sutton gets the ball. He's already got three touchdowns, breaks a tackle after being hit in the backfield by number 51, Larry English, somehow squeezed out three yards out of a really kind of a busted play. Well, this game is really shaped up a lot. Early on, we had a lot of penalties, a lot of fumbles, really sloppy-looking football game. And lately, we've seen nothing but solid football teams running it up and down the field on each other and really just trying to figure out who, want, who wants it more. Sign of fatigue, Brian, hands on the hips. Look at that chest. In and out, baby. Get that air in there quick. Sometimes that won't help. Ray Smith trying to suck it up. Here comes Bazinet. He's got the ball by himself. Runs out of bounds at about the three-yard line. Gain of six and a first down Northwestern. It'll be first and goal from the three-yard line. I will be very surprised if Northwestern does not score on this first play. From what I'm seeing out of NIU right now, they just do not look really fresh in the least bit. They look like they're dragging. We well, hit it on the head, Brian, moments ago when you talked about it's the team that really wants it the most here in the fourth quarter. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Because I don't care how tired you are at the end of a ball game, if you want it more, if you can dig deeper than the guy across from you, you're going to get it done. It doesn't matter how tired you are, how much your body wants to stop and rest. If you want it more, you're going to get it done. Ray Smith showing there he wanted it plenty. Dig it, digging deep and then smashing Tyrell Sutton. This drive started at Northwestern's own 24. 17 plays, 76 yards. What's surprising, just only two minutes and 20 seconds off the clock, though. Look at this. They're holding up good. Down there. They're one, baby. They're defending their goal line. A lot of times you get people's backs up against the wall. Tyrell, know what they're made of. Tyrell Sutton being ridden out of bounds by Larry English, also number 53 to McCarthy. You know, one of the things the coaching staffs did tell us that if there's a problem with this spread offense, it's inside the red zone. You're exactly right, and this is way inside the red zone. They don't even have a goal line offense. And they're just look, lining up the same way they do on every snap, spreading it out. Three wide receivers to the right of your screen. Bazin, he's got a man open. Oh. They had a pick play going it. Well, guess what play that was? The same play that I've talked about all day long. Wide receivers clearing out, running the flat underneath. Bazinet for the second time can't make that completion. That's big right there. Now they're going to go for the field goal and only put them up by six. And I used still alive here, man. Guarantee you that's exactly what Randy Walker's thinking. We needed a touchdown there. Josh Howells on to attempt the field goal of 19 or yeah 19 yards. Ah, fake baby. Yeah, oh, does he make it? Oh man! Randy Walker rolling the dice. This long snapper or the holder rather. Can I tell you that I was on the verge? It was on the tip of my tongue saying that the first thing that I get was out of kidding you Mike and I held it in my said why did I do that and sure enough they ran the fake I don't look like a genius even though they didn't get it <laughs> Northwestern rolling the dice but coming up short can Northern Illinois take advantage of it find out in a second Loctite Power Grab grabs instantly with nine times higher initial hold than the leading brand without bracing and without hammering. Loctite Power Grab. Project solved. At Hyundai, we believe for all the ways we can help you survive an accident. We should provide just as many to help you avoid one. The all-new 2006 Sonata. The only mid-size sedan with electronic stability control and six airbags standard. It's a Hyundai like you've never seen before. 
Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? I don't care to ever go on another date again. I'm looking for like a serious relationship. I want to find a soulmate. I want to find a partner. It's time for PerfectMatch.com. Last month, thousands of men and women found and met their perfect match, and now you can too. Only PerfectMatch.com offers the Duet Total Compatibility System. Developed by Dr. Pepper Schwartz, one of the country's leading relationship authorities, Duet is a proven method to help you find happiness. Go to perfectmatch.com today and find out how you can get two months free through this special TV offer. We guarantee that we'll give you perfect matches with true soulmate potential. Come to perfectmatch.com and get started with your free compatibility profile. I feel like I custom made him myself. Without being on Perfect Match, I wouldn't have Darla in my life. I have never been happier in my life. I think that I have met my husband. Come to perfectmatch.com. 39 remaining here in the fourth and final quarter. Northwestern leading by three. They could have led by six or maybe more had Ryan Peterson, the punter, but Holder on that play not been stopped short of the goal line. Randy Walker rolling the dice, and it didn't work. Well, it seemed kind of surprising to me he would want to kick a field goal and go up by six. That's why I maybe thought about it, but I never thought that they would stop him four downs in a row on that goal line. That's impressive. Garrett Wolf gets it out of the end zone, a gain of three. He's approaching the 200 yard mark for the afternoon. 5'7, 177, but he is a workhorse. Well, I think it all comes down to this drive here, Mike. If they can get something going, this could be the game breaker right here. They got to be consistent, hold on to the football, manage the clock, and move it. Horvath in his own end zone. This one a wobbler. How did Chatone Powers, number 83, catch that football? Frederick Tarver, number 25, the safety in his face. The ball was a wounded duck, wobbling like crazy, but somehow Chatone able to bring it down. A gain of 16, first down Huskies. Well, the wobble on it did just what it needed to do to slow up just enough for him to grab it. It's like in golf when you over club and account for the miss hit. He over, he over clubbed and had a miss hit, and it was perfect. I'm not so sure Tarver didn't get a hand on the ball. First and ten Huskies just inside their own 20. They give to Wolf, and the flag is down on the play. That's not a good sign when it's in the interior. And Genny there, Barry Colfield, number 67. At the point of attack. Well, Joe Novak talking about Harbaugh. He said he needs to develop. Shot block. Numbers 68 and 65 on the offense. That penalty will be marked off half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. He said Harbaugh needs to develop a little bit more leadership skills, and I don't think it's going to be needed in any more of a situation than it is right now, Mike. You need to have a leader out on that field to command these troops to get down the field and get something happening here. They've only got eight and a half minutes to do it. First and 19, ball resting at their own 10-yard line. Horvath gives it to Wolf, who cuts it back. Look out. Really cuts it back. Trying to run him down from behind is Brendan Smith. He finally does, but not before Garrett Wolf rips off 40 yards and takes it into Northwestern territory just inside the 50-yard line. Unreal. Well, he's got the quicks to get outside and get open. He just doesn't have the wheels quite enough to beat him on foot down the boundary. Good play for the... Northwestern defense not giving up on it. And on the afternoon, Garrett Wolf, 226 yards. The best ever rushing performance by an NIU running back against the Big Ten team, LaShawn Johnson, 306 against Iowa back in 1993. This is already the second best. Michael Turner had 160 against Wisconsin. Michael DeBurner Turner playing for the San Diego Chargers now. 7.33 remaining here in the fourth and final quarter. Huskies down by three, but on the move here. 
Lining up in the spread themselves, except they got a tight end in the ball game. Horvath looking for that tight end. He's got him, Jake Norton. The junior out of Lake Lillian, Minnesota. Deep in the Northwestern Territory, down to the 37-yard line. Well, he's been his go-to guy lately. The big tight end, him and his backup. Safety blanket, if you will. And those big North, Northern Illinois offensive linemen giving Horvath plenty of time to throw. And so maybe it's Northwestern's defense that is wearing out right now, Brian. Well, he talked about that thin defensive line. How he's going to do a lot of subbing because they don't have much there and not a lot of depth. Wolf behind a great lead block by Brandon Davis, who was in there as an H-back. You can hear the smack from up here. Gain of seven. Yeah, we've got a little roll reversal here. Northwestern's defense is in the exact same position that Northern Illinois was earlier. And look at it, they're bending over, sucking wind. It's tough second ball game of the year. No matter how much you work, no matter how much you train, you cannot get game ready without playing football games. I know some backs would be happy that for a season. 60 carries, 337 yards, 77 yards. You know, a little guy like him is not supposed to wear a defense out, but that's exactly what's happening. It really is, and that clock is ticking. It's down to six minutes. They're on the 25. They don't have long to go. They almost want to make sure they don't score too quickly. Don't give Northwestern a chance to get out in that spread offense and try to beat them down the field through the air. The human bowling ball. 5'7", 177. He played against Brett Bazinet in high school at River Grove Holy Cross. Uh, Brett was at St. Viator. Wolf this time swarmed by first Mike Kane, number 91 for Northwestern. Then Barry Cofield, who's still down on the ground right now, number 67, their best defensive lineman. He gets up slowly. Kane did a great job against Northern Illinois' tackle there and really just kind of blocked him about two yards back in the backfield. We're trying to go outside. That's not the best thing to happen to your right tackle. And he shut that play down. Now we've got a big, a big, big fourth down coming up. This, this could be the game right here. That's a long field goal attempt. Can't imagine they're processing that one. Well, Joe Novak has already shown that he's got great confidence in this offense. I don't see him not going for it here on fourth and one. If they do attempt the field goal, it'll be Chris Nednick. Nendick from 40 yards. We have a charge timeout. Northern Illinois, please reset the game clock for 5-13. Joe Nelback a little bit hot while he uh, deliberates on what he's going to do. We'll take this timeout. For men, Competition is a 24-7 thing that demands the protection of new speed stick 24-7. That's why they developed the microabsorber technology in new speed stick 24-7. Powerful particles that can absorb up to 100 times their weight in wetness, keeping you drier. And ready for even the most demanding competition. New speed stick 24-7 with microabsorber technology, keeping men drier 24-7. As team mom, my mom always watches what we eat and encourages us to eat our Campbell's Chunky Soup. Like chunky chicken noodle. Eat up those big chunks of chicken. She's also very encouraging from the sidelines. When you feed them, don't stop. Campbell's Chunky Chicken Noodle, it fills you up right. 1986. Classic. 
Christian football fans. Can't get enough NFL this season? Follow your team and the entire NFL through the pages of Sports Illustrated. SI gives you the insight and analysis every fan wants with award-winning writing, spectacular photos, and coverage of all your favorite sports. Plus, as part of this special offer, you will also get a Team Choice NFL fleece jacket with the logo of your favorite team and this Team Choice NFL tee and the color of your favorite team. Both are free when you order 56 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.59 an issue. A savings of over 60% off the cover price. Use your credit card for faster delivery and get a free NFL team hat. Call now and gear up in support of your favorite team with the officially licensed Team Choice NFL fleece jacket, t-shirt, and hat all free when you order a year of Sports Illustrated. Call 1-800-835-9500. That's 1-800-835-9500. Or order online at sinflorder.com. The Windy City skyline. Chicago called the Windy City not because of the weather, Brian Kitchen, but because of the blustery politicians back a long time ago. Got it. But 11 miles away, Tyrell Sutton, a true freshman for Northwestern, is on the sidelines right now as his Wildcat teammates on the field are trying to hold off Northern Illinois. Northwestern leading NIU 31-28 with five minutes to go, and the Huskies going for it on fourth and one to keep this drive alive. Phil Horvath gives it to his money back. Garrett Rick, he's got the first down. This possession continues and the clock, the clock keeps running. We talked about it in the opening of the show. Joe Novak wanting to build some tradition here. Guess what? This is a tradition building moment. They have, he has never beaten a Randy Walker team or Northwestern and has an awful record. One victory in the last 30 years, this school against Big Ten teams. This would certainly get him a long way on, the, on that trail of trying to build tradition. Novak calling Wolf's number and he ran right behind their big Mid-American Conference all Mid-American Conference selection center Brian Van Acker who's back in the ball game. First and ten. Wolf again inside the 15 down to the 12. Time now winding down and becoming a factor in this game after the gain of nine by Garrett Wolf. Well, you like to see the big gainer, but if he breaks it there, they've given the ball back to Northwestern with a little over four minutes left in the ball game. And so you got to try to watch the clock a little bit. I know it's it's kind of a, it's kind of like we talked about earlier, taking those three points off the board. It's just things you've got to watch out for. Yes, you want to score a touchdown, but you do not want to do it too fast. It's kind of like give and take. Well, how much how much time are you going to use here? Wolf has got it. He tries to bounce it outside. There's McGarrigle going to be shedding a block. Shedding the block by Brian Van Acker. He's a center who they actually use, and they pull him sometimes. McGarrigle is so much smaller, trying to shed the block, and he finally did there to send Garrett Wolf for a loss of two. I'm telling you what, McGarrigle's spending so much time in Wolf's face. I swear his girlfriend might be getting jealous. <laughs> That's like every time he looks down. Let's hope that's not the case. They're just smacking each other every time. The interstate rivalry. NIU has never beat Northwestern in six tries. They're 0 1 and 5. Third down. Horvath has it batted down. Big decision here. Barry Cofield, number 67, gets a hand up. Here comes the field goal unit. And now Chris Nendick will come out to the field, the sophomore from Naperville, Illinois, played his high school football at Naperville Central to tie this thing up. Well, he's a solid kicker. He's Mr. Automatic. I don't believe in jinxes, so I'm going to say Mr. Automatic. And he's going to make it anyway. <laughs> Horvath is the holder of the quarterback. Keep that in mind, the attempt from 30 yards away. Two yards away. We got us a ball game. And 31 all. Northwestern, Northern Illinois. We could be going to overtime. We could be having an ESPN classic. You wanted live? We've got it. Tomorrow's classics now on ESPN Classic. Touchdown, Wildcats! 
catch the cadets of Army as they take on Baylor, followed by the Hoosiers versus the Kentucky Wildcats. Next Saturday, starting at 3 Eastern, live on ESPN Classic. He was football's minister of defense. Right before the snap, Reggie said, here comes Jesus. But did all his sermons hit the right note? Homosexuality is a decision. It's not a race. Sports Century, Reggie White. 8 p.m. Monday on ESPN Classic. The nominees for the Major League Baseball Comeback Player of the Year Award, sponsored by Pfizer, are now online. Vote, and you may win a trip to throw out a ceremonial first pitch at the World Series. Built strong. Built comfortable. Built right. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Wrangler. Real. Comfortable. Jeans. Who says you were out of shape? Go deep. Front end pedestrian safety system. Just one of 120 not so standard features available on the all new German engineered Passat. Touchdown. And he said, I'd like to see you again. And I said, I'd like to see you again too. It was like we already knew each other, it was just phenomenal. It's just lunch, dating for busy professionals. I think it's just lunch is good, for guys especially, because it, it can put them in contact with people that they wouldn't meet normally. It's hard to get people together when they have hectic schedules. You basically show up, it's effortless, it's easy. Now's the time to let It's Just Lunch match you up with someone new. Call now to find out more, 1-800-99-LUNCH. <laughs> Mike Adamley, Brian Kitchen, Northwestern 31, Northern Illinois 31. A lot of NIU fans have made the 55-mile trek to Evanston. Here is the play that kind of saved NU defense, that left hand up in the air by Barry Cofield on a third down pass. Their big senior that they count so heavily upon coming up with a big play. He's a guy that played outside last year. A defensive end, they moved him inside and tackle. He's a big kid. 6'4", 305. NFL material right there, baby. Northwestern lost their best defensive lineman, Luis Castillo, who went in the first round to the San Diego Chargers. A lot of people believe that Barry Cofield has a lot of the same kind of qualities. Gerard Hamlet with the football on the return, and he gets stung inside the 20-yard line. Next Saturday, ESPN Classic has a full afternoon of live college football action. First at 3 p.m. Eastern, the Baylor Bears head to West Point to take on Bobby Ross's Army Black Knights. Then at 6.45 Eastern, the Kentucky Wildcats are in Bloomington to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. College football live on ESPN Classic Saturday next week. So Northwestern starts this possession and maybe their last of the game at their own 18-yard line. Bazinet swings it out to Jonathan Fields, a play that you have noted many times this afternoon. Brian has worked so well for NU, but there's a flag on the play. It's almost a gimme. Play. Personal foul, face mask, number 29 on the defense. That penalty is 15 yards and will be tacked on to the end of the run. First down. Penalty, personal foul, face mask. Deion Smith, guilty of the infraction for Northern Illinois. Well, we've seen that all day long. We've seen personal fouls, whether it be excess celebration, hits out of bounds, face masks. This is going to be a big one. Could be Joe Novak is not happy in the least bit. And he's letting somebody know it. Five times for 61 yards. NIU has been penalized. And look at Sutton's got the ball. He breaks two, three tackles. And finally, inside Northern Illinois territory, knocked out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Well, two plays later, 
They're inside NIU's territory. They started the same play they started in the last two or three series. A little dump pass by Bazinet. Penalty I tell you what, what, watch Sutton again. There's a missed tackle. There's a missed tackle. There's a broken tackle. Finally, Ray Smith riding him out of bounds. And Joe Novak livid on the NIU sideline. They call Sutton's number again. Boy, he has this amazing net for finding holes. He breaks it outside, much like Garrett Wolf of Northern Illinois, inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. The great thing about this play, he gets great downfield blocking. We've seen it not just on this one, but the one earlier. He just gets people down there who want to get people out of his way. Dylan Theory, just a sophomore, he's the tackle. He's over 200 yards. Tyrell Sutton, 205. Dylan Theory and Joe Tripodi, the guys who opened up that hole that last time. Now Bassinet will keep it himself, and he'll go left side. He's inside the 10. Now this, remember, is the last time the Cats were down here inside the red zone. That spread offense bogged down. They tried the trick play with the fake field goal. Ryan Peterson, the holder, got stopped short. Northern came back and kicked the field goal to tie the game. Well, we'll see how that theory plays out with this spread offense at the 10-yard line. Bazinet's been pretty good in the second half. Everything he's put in the air has been caught. Gerard Hamlet gets the ball inside. He breaks a couple of tackles before finally getting stuffed. Ray Smith is coming up big. You notice those two plays produced nothing. Guess who was not in there? Tyrell Sutton. He was watching from the sidelines. But he's back in the ball game. I'll tell you, when number 48 hits you, you go backwards. Tough. Tough guy, Ray Smith, and playing with a very painful hip pointer. That's why they call him strong safeties. He's that and then some. Third down again here. Bassinet in trouble. And now, with 124 remaining, field goal time. I don't see any field goal units. There is a flag on the play. It's on the Northern Illinois sideline, sitting the clock, sitting at about the nine yard line. Let's watch this again. It's against Northern. That's just two penalties, crucial penalties. You know, I say that word crucial, but it really doesn't matter. A penalty is a penalty. It doesn't matter when it gets you. It just so happens that this one's at a very, very bad time. Gives them a first down, first and goal from the five. Same thing as the last series, remember? It was on the two. They held them four downs. Didn't think they could do it then. It's going to be a tough order right now. First and five from the five. Sutton, touchdown number four. Walks it in. The true freshman, Akron, Ohio, Tyra Sutton. short of amazing well as great as the goal line stand as they had last time they certainly didn't put up the effort this time gaping hole walks into the end zone what a performance by that kid today joel house for the extra point it is up and it is good so with 102 remaining here in the fourth quarter it's Northwestern 38, NIU 31. And Tyrell Sutton, a true freshman from Akron, Ohio. Well, and a child shall lead it. That ties a school record held by many. Four rushing touchdowns. Boy. Are you on that list? Uh, yeah, I am, as a matter of fact. I couldn't resist. Okay, Mr. Super Bowl run. Hey, I'm, yeah, I know. I'm not going to argue with you there. You know, we really have run out of superlatives. I'm telling you. It's been from start to finish. We knew it was coming. It happened. 
You know, and, and it all began in the meeting yesterday. We meet this guy, we shake his hand, we listen to what he has to say, how poised, how confident. It makes it so much nicer when it's a good kid. I mean, yeah. just a solid individual to be able to go out and put up a performance like that. In this day and age when the uh, phrase, the two words, student athlete, has become an oxymoron. Yes, you're exactly right. He came to Northwestern to get himself an education first and a football education second. Oh, baby, are they fired up now? Malcolm Arrington, the linebacker, with that hit after the 18-yard run. Here's Sutton one more time. He's just pretty to watch. So solid. Low to the ground. Power. You can't tackle him with his arm, with your arms. It's been a two-man show this afternoon. Garrett Wolf with 34 carries. He's over 200 yards, 245, averaging 7.2, three touchdowns. Tyrell Sutton, the true freshman, 30 carries, 214 yards. He's averaging over seven yards per carry. He's got four scores. Well, they got a minute left, two timeouts. Yep, it's not over. The Northwestern accustomed to playing overtime games. Should that happen here? But I think this defense is sufficiently fired up now that they won't let it get that far. Wolf, a gain of eight. Well, as I watched the Ohio University Pittsburgh game last night, it was glaringly obvious that the Pittsburgh offense had no clue how to run a two-minute offense. Everything they ran was in inside. They had to burn so many plays, and they never got the ball to the boundary, never got it out of bounds. It was a very poorly managed two-minute drill. And they kept running the football late, which you just can't do. And so it'll be interesting to see here today how Northern Illinois handles this two-minute offense because they are a running football team. You know, and one of these days we'll be able to read about this game in the ESPN College Football Encyclopedia because it is the biggest, richest reference guide ever published on the history of college football. Read about the profiles, records, and statistical leaders and the fight song lyrics of all 119 Division I programs. I know you don't know them all, Brian. The Ivy League School from the most prominent historically black colleges dating way back to 1869. Box scores for every major bowl game ever played. Vote breakdowns for every Heisman race. A complete list of every year's consensus All-American. Available now wherever books are sold. Well, a book on Phil Horvath. He's been good. Now he has to be great. Second down. We're under a minute now. Pass broken up. And a flag on the play, it may be pass interference. The pass broken up by Deontay Battle, who's subbing today for Herschel Henderson. Pass intended for number seven, Britt Davis. So an automatic first down for the Huskies. Well, I was watching that play from the start, and I didn't see it. Maybe I just missed it. But I was watching that route from the minute the ball snapped. It looked like he had the right arm over the shoulder pad, but again. Well, it must have been pretty obvious to make that call at that situation. Official right on top of it. First and 10 Huskies. And Davis, the go-to guy again. He gets the ball just shy of the first down. See where they spot the football. Clock stops with 36 ticks left on the clock after the gain of nine. Well, we're seeing what I just got through talking about. When you're not getting the ball to the boundary, they've just burned their two timeouts. Now they've got 36 seconds on the clock, and they've still got to go 51 yards. That puts your offense in a bind, your quarterback even more so. And I just, I just, you got to look at it and say, well, why can't they get the ball to the boundary? Well, why can't they? Because Northwestern is rushing three defensive linemen. So what does that mean? Do the math, minus three, 11 minus three. That leaves you eight men to drop back into a zone defense. So they've got nowhere to go. And they're in their prevent. Safeties are deep. Corners are protecting the boundaries. It's going to be a tall order for them to be able to get 51 yards in 36 seconds. Joe Novak. 
prowling the sidelines like a wounded bear. Well, I'm telling you, what a great game, though. They all poured their heart into this one. Nobody, 36, nobody has cashed it in. 36 seconds remaining in the game. North, Northern Illinois facing a second and one situation. Northwestern with the 38-31 lead. And Novak, the head coach of NIU, who's done a remarkable job of return, turning this proud program around, rebuilding it, giving it some prominence and respect. Having a tough time looking on here. Corvac. Over the coverage. He's got number 84, Sam Hurd. First down, Northern Illinois. And more important, Hurd stops the clock by going out of bounds. They have to reset the chains anyway. Gain of 20. Well, see, now you're in a position where you can maybe take shots at the end zone now. You've got to have good protection. Northwestern has to start thinking, do I still rush three? Or do I start putting pressure and not giving him the time? Because if you keep doing that and he can make throws like that, you're going to be in trouble. It'll right. be interesting to see if they bring pressure or not. All right, Karnak, you said you felt the fake field goal attempt. You feel overtime here. Oh, man. Horvath throwing this one away. Pressure applied that time by Kevin Mims, redshirt freshman out of Woodland, Texas. There's, Joe doesn't want to go through more, many more games like this, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Tough on the nerves. Two old school guys, Joe Novak and Randy Walker, both graduates of the Cradle of Coaches, Miami of Ohio. Now in a battle to the finish, 24 seconds remain. Second and ten Huskies. Deep in Northwestern territory. You called it. They had a couple of shots at going for the end zone. They tried one there. That pass intended for Hurd, number 84, but real, real sound coverage on the play by number 27, Reggie McPherson. Well, you look at plays that you practice sometimes, at least we did in the NFL, the hook and lateral. And I take that back. It's Mark Weiss Cole. Number 20. And plays like that, but the only problem with those is is you risk being caught in bounds. And they've got only a few seconds, 18 seconds here. They've got to put it deep to have a chance. I don't know why they're not going trips and jumping for the ball yet, but Horvath on third down. This time shortens out the route, shortens up the route to Sam Hurd. Nice. Catches the ball in front of Marquise Cole. But you take it for granted that kids know to get out of bounds and stop the clock. But it takes a lot of poise to be able to do that, especially when you're dragging Marquise Cole with you. Now they've got a first down, 11 seconds. Got a couple of good shots here. You know, this is as it should be. You got Sam Hurd, a three-time letter winner, a senior, one of their best wide receivers going against Northwestern's best cover corner, Marquise Cole. And they're leaving him on an island. They're going to bring pressure here. Looks like they're manning up. 11 seconds remaining. Northwestern leads by seven. First and 10, NIU. They're bringing the house. They're bringing everybody. And North NIU picking up everybody. Oh, it on. Sam Hurd. Whew. Man. Unbelievable. A 20-yard touchdown path. Phil Horvath going crazy, jumping up and down. Wow. Well, I guarantee you, Greg... Dust off those overtime rules. Greg Colby, the defensive coordinator, he played zone the entire way down the football field defensively. And then he manned up on the biggest play of the game, having the confidence in his corners to get it done. And they bring the house. They bring seven players. They drop one in the middle as a robber, and they man it up outside. He just runs a nice little post route right in front of the corner. And they and take advantage of a real mismatch. Deontay Battle, the man on Sam Hurd that time, just 5'10". Sam Hurd goes 6'4". Well, don't no quit neither of these teams. You asked me earlier if I thought OT. I wouldn't answer it because I really didn't think it was going to happen. I really thought it was an unsurmountable task to go 51 yards in 31 seconds without a timeout. Thought they had mismanaged the clock earlier by calling the two timeouts. But 
Man, that is impressive. This has been an, an, an incredible ball game. Well, assuming that Chris Nendick makes the extra point and we go to overtime as we watch the touchdown pass one more time, remember. Well, it's not pretty, you know, but it's where it needs to be. Counts. That's all that matters. That's why they like Phil Horvath so much. Gets it done. Yep. Well, that'll go a long way as far as his leadership skills are concerned to leave a, a, a game, to lead a game tying drive in the fourth quarter on the enemy territory. That's impressive. On the Northwestern football poster are all the players, and it says, you know, purple collar, not afraid to go overtime. Last year, the Cats 3-1 and one in overtime games with wins over Ohio State, Illinois, and TCU. Oh, my goodness. They're going, They're going for, for the win. I'll tell you what. you got to love that. You've got to love that. Six seconds on the clock, and Joe Novak now rolling the dice. NIU going for the victory. Northwestern wins. Holy cow. Unbelievable call. You gotta love it though. There's still six seconds remaining. You gotta love it. I think everybody here at Ryan Field, including ourselves, thought this game was gonna go to overtime. Shock. And conventional wisdom says. But he puts it in the hands of his quarterback. He he had his wide out manned up. Ran a good route, slipped on the turf. Man. I can't believe it. Neither can Joe Novak. Here it is. Horvath. Receiver falls down, doesn't have a chance. He was looking at him all the way. Number 84, Sam Hurd with Mark Cleese Cole was right there. Holding his hands up saying, I didn't touch him, ref. I did not touch him. That would have been a touchdown had not he slipped. Well, top of the screen, he's trying to he's trying to sell the fade route, which is basically lobbing it up to the corner, making Marquise turn. I think if he'd have taken another step and got him turned just a hair more, he'd have one been off. One and 26 and one against Big Ten teams since 1970. Boy, you hate to see somebody lose this game. It's just the way it is. Unless the, a miracle happens, it'll be 127 and one. They've never beaten Northwestern. Last time they played in 2000, Northwestern, a, an easy winner in the home opener back that year. Joe Novak is going to get criticized a lot by the local media. Oh, yeah. In the Cal, in Chicago. But I'll tell you what, that was a gutsy call. And the way things had been going and the way things, the way their wide receiver, Sam Hurd, had been working against NU secondary, I think it was a good one. Well, well, you look at the way the touchdown came about. They manned them up. They beat them. They beat their corner. And he's rolling the dice. Think he can do it again. But I hate to point this out, but I told you wouldn't go to overtime. <laughs> <laughs> you lying dog. <laughs> oh, I feel for that man. I'm telling you what. I hate to see anybody lose. This has just been a fantastic ball game. How about this guy? He's got to be dejected. 36 carry Garrett Wolf. I mean, he has he has kept Northern in this game all game long, and, and a, a truly sensational performance. I, I would dare say the best performance on one field by two opposing running backs. But why don't you, but why don't you run, don't run the play they ran earlier? The delay draw to Wolf. You roll Horvath, sure. hand what? it off to him. You, I mean, roll your there, dice There's that a way. lot of plays they could have run. Well, we can, let, we can second guess Yeah, all let day. the second guessing begin because yeah. it's going to happen. NIU trying for the onside kick. Reggie McPherson, number 27. Johnny on the spot as they had the all-hands team in there for NU to cover up. Well, it was a good kick by the kicker, and it just didn't get the big giant bounce that you want. Right. It just rolled just like the bowling ball, and he just scooped it right up. You got a little pop right there like you want to get out of your kicker. It's a hard thing to do. They practice it all the time, but yeah. you just never know. That's just the boy the ball bounces. Ten minutes a day on special teams, and they do that onside kick until the guys get it right. McPherson looking like a shortstop. Bassinet taking one knee. Wow. You know, it's a shame these teams aren't slated to meet anytime soon. But to my way of thinking, Northern Illinois and Northwestern should meet 
every single season because this is a tremendous rivalry and we saw why today, Brian. I'm telling you what, the last two performances against this Northern Illinois team, against Michigan at home and here at Northwestern, phenomenal. Joe Bo Novak is doing an awesome job with that Once team. again, our final score, NU 38, NIU 37 for Brian Kitchen and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Mike Adamley, so long from Evanston, Illinois. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. ESPN Classics Battle Lines. I'm Rich Eisen. On Thanksgiving Day 1971, with America sorely in need of a diversion, the football teams from Nebraska and Oklahoma played a game for the ages. The Vietnam War spilled from television sets and campuses boiled with unrest. But for one afternoon, the country was spellbound. An estimated 80 million watched and listened, some of them from rice patties a half a world away, as the Cornhuskers and Sooners went after each other with a desperate ferocity. We were in the midst of Vietnam and some of our friends were involved. That game, that sport at that time was a stabilizing factor in a lot of people's lives. It served a purpose for a lot of people to put some of the frustrations, the concerns, the politics, everything, aside for that one day and just say, hey, here's two great teams meeting on the football field. The two teams looked across the calendar at each other and seemed to sense what was to come in three months. From the very first week, uh, we knew ex uh, Oklahoma was going to be the team to beat and that the national championship game would be played at Oklahoma when we got there. Nebraska was ranked number one in the country. We were ranked two, but both teams were on a collision course. Others had been on this same course before, most notably Army and Notre Dame in 1946, and the Irish again against Michigan State in 1966. Each had been hailed as the game of the century. In 1971, that drumbeat echoed again. We were blowing everybody out, and Oklahoma was blowing everybody out, and um, about halfway through the season, it was hard to take a lot of the teams serious anymore. I really didn't think in 1971 that anyone, any place, anywhere could stop us, uh, bring them all on. I don't think we ever thought that we could lose. It was just a tremendous amount of confidence. By early October, you could tell, hey, nobody's gonna stop these two until they play each other. So you had really five, six weeks of talking about it and analyzing it and uh, uh, predicting it. We started off preparing for that game at the beginning of the season. The coaches always say don't look past one game to get to the next game, but, you know, they don't believe that themselves. <laughs> Anybody that says, well, I waited, I took them game by game, give me a break. Uh, I'd like to tell you we did, but we didn't. All year long, you know, when we weren't playing, we were watching Oklahoma play. After every game, they had Nebraska and they had Oklahoma and, and who they played and how many points were scored. And, you know, did Nebraska beat their opponent by more than Oklahoma beating their opponent? We were rated one and two in the country and by wide margin, it wasn't any question about being one and two. In the week leading up to the game of the century, the media hyperventilated. First of all, you got to remember that was an era when there was only one game shown a week. In 1971, ABC was the only game in town. You either watched our game that day or you read the funny papers. We were up in the dorm watching Monday Night Football, and here comes Howard Cosell hyping the game. And, and of course, that's enough to put shivers up your spine uh, for a bunch of 20-year-old kids. There was just intense national interest in the doggone thing. An average uh, uh, credential request for a week's game at Oklahoma uh, would probably be 50 or 60. Uh, but for the Nebraska game, it was just overwhelming. I think we counted something like 500 requests. I don't recollect being interviewed by the Washington Post and the New York Times in, in the same week since. So, I mean, it was pretty intense. I remember getting interviewed by Sports Illustrated and never even seen a Sports Illustrated reporter before. I looked at that thing, oh my 
my God, I want to be playing that thing. <laughs> That's when I got started getting nervous. They disconnected our phones in the dorms because they were saying, you know, you're going to be getting calls from all over the place. I don't know how many people know this, but Nebraska took its own food to Norman. They were worried about somebody poisoning the food, so George Sullivan, our head trainer, decided they would fly all the food down for our pregame meals and that just to be on the safe side. My partner, Paul Schneider, stayed in the uh, dining room and I stayed in the kitchen and watched the preparation and the whole works. It was almost comical because we'd actually brought our own salad dressing, our own meats and potatoes. It's like, boy, this must be a pretty important game <laughs> if we're gonna bring our own food down here to feed our players. All the hoopla, all the rankings, number one versus number two, uh, Thanksgiving Day. I mean, uh, what could be more American football than that? You'd see on television from Monday through Friday was that game coming at you. And you saw that all year long because they keep flashing up Thanksgiving, Oklahoma and Nebraska. Well, every week, everyone would see what Oklahoma and Nebraska was accomplishing. So everybody said, boy, that's going to be something. been in an accident of any kind? Any stalling, sputtering, that kind of thing? Don't buy a used car without a Carfax history report. Now with the buyback guarantee. For details, ask your dealer or go to Carfax.com. Built strong. Built comfortable. Built right. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. It's the all-new mid-size sedan with a luxurious full-size cabin protected by six airbags, standard. More interior space than Camry or Accord. The all-new 2006 Sonata, a Hyundai like you've never seen before. It only took two minutes for this town to be destroyed. To a little girl who lived through it, this is more than a teddy bear. It's a step towards normal. It's why all state catastrophe teams not only have hot coffee and help for grown-ups, they've also handed out more than 12,000 teddy bears to kids. People come first. If you're an Allstate customer affected by Hurricane Katrina, please call 1-800-54-STORM for help. Who says you were out of shape? Go deep! Front end pedestrian safety system. Just one of 120 not so standard features available on the all new German engineered Passat. Touchdown! keep your kids away from drugs and alcohol, your friends at American Family Insurance would like to recommend a great policy. It's called Family Dinner. Studies prove that kids who regularly eat dinner with their families are far less likely to get involved with drugs or alcohol. So please join us in supporting Family Day on September 26th, a day to have dinner with your kids and help make a statement about the importance of eating together as a family. Pledge to participate by visiting amfam.com. Family Dinner, always a good policy. Buying a new home? Shopping for a mortgage. When you're comparing two good mortgage companies, how do you choose? Pick the mortgage company that offers the lowest rate and fees. At Guaranteed Rate, our low rates have turned the mortgage industry upside down. Visit our website where we post a true rate and fee comparison of 10 leading lenders. And if we're not the lowest, we'll pay you $500. Call us at 866-934-RATE. That's 866-934-RATE. Guaranteed Rate. Lowest rate. Guaranteed.
after an Oklahoma field goal, Nebraska followed up Johnny Rogers' lightning bolt punt return with another touchdown. Early in the second quarter, the Sooners were behind 14-3. Had to play catch-up, a game with which they were neither familiar nor equipped. I don't know that we'd ever been behind 14-3 as we were to start. These guys only give up five points a game. How's Oklahoma, who can't pass? Too high again. How are they going to uh, even score a touchdown now? The wild card in this thing was that Oklahoma had started playing the wishbone. And early on, nobody had seen it before. And we had a, a very good defensive coach, Monty Kiffin. The biggest thing we were going to do is make the quarterback keep the ball. We had to take great Pruitt out of the game. We knew that Jack didn't have the speed that the other guys in the backfield had. I'd make the quarterback carry the ball, and then I'd pound him. And it's what they did. They made it real hard for us to get the ball to Pruitt. When Nebraska put the reins on him, it really created a tiny seed of doubt in the Sooners thinking, you know, what's going on? If Pruitt can't get loose, you know, who can? What happened then uh, is that Mildren ended up carrying the ball. So we took Pruitt away, but we still there was still too many weapons to stop uh, in that wishbone. Mildren kept getting knocked down, and he kept getting back up. He carried six times in a 13-play touchdown drive that got Oklahoma to within four. He wouldn't back down. You could hit him just as hard as you could hit him. He'd get back up, and he'd be ready to go again. You choose the way you want to die when defensing the wishbone, and they chose to take away our outside game, which allowed Jack Mildren to have a great day. Trailing 14 to 10, almost everyone assumed that with only 29 seconds left until halftime and with the end zone 67 yards away, Oklahoma, a running team, would run out the clock. But assumptions can be dangerous things. We were really uh, told to run out the clock. I'm not sure if anyone knew what was going on besides Jack and I. <laughs> we want to pass, and Coach Fairbanks doesn't want to do something dumb, and it was the right strategy. Jack just looked at me and said, what, what do we need to throw? And I told him, hey, I can beat him on post route. I can get inside of him. Mildred looking to throw. Loops one out. It's coming in the area of Harris, and he has it. The thing that always scared me to death about the wishbone was not the running game, it was the passing game. Because in order to stop the wishbone, you had to have your secondary so involved in stopping the run. The coaches decided to come up, let's do something different this year. Let's switch Blahan Kush. <laughs> Bill had played safety all year where he really never played much man-to-man -man coverage. Bill ended up playing John Harrison pretty much one-on-one. -on -one. Billy couldn't push him to a safety, couldn't push him to a linebacker. It was a very lonely position that Bill was in. Oklahoma's uh, tradition over the years is you hang in there, you hang in there, and then bang, they hit you with a big play, and you go, what the hell happened? Mildren back there to throw again. He gets his pass away. Harrison, touchdown! Boom! The Sooner Boomer guns go off, and I uh, was looking for a place to crawl under the bench. All of a sudden, Nebraska's behind for the first time all year. We thought we were in pretty good shape there, and all of a sudden, instantly, in two plays, they had gone the length of the field, scored, and that's the end of the half. That was a real devastating moment. I think we were too excited at halftime. We felt like what we were doing was working. We knew that we were in command of the game at that point in time. I was worried that we had scored a couple touchdowns pretty easy, and I didn't want to have our team have any false sense of security about how well we had played in that first half. That, boy, there was a lot of football yet to be played. Even though we were behind, I felt really good about the way we were beginning to take control of the game, and we were. In the first half, I think we were trying to be a little cute and going sideways, and Oklahoma's speed and pursuit was good enough to keep us from doing anything very well. Our adjustment at halftime was certainly to decide to run straight ahead at them. I kind of, at halftime, just said, you know, I need to be more determined myself. I need to run harder. I need not to be afraid of following the football or making a mistake and just go lay it on the line. Down 17-14 early in the third quarter, the Cornhuskers reverted to character and simply overpowered Oklahoma. We just picked up the intensity a little bit, and Jeff started breaking a couple tackles, and all of a sudden we started to move the ball like we'd, we'd really done all year long. All of us kind of fed off each other. When I had some success, they blocked harder. We all became more motivated, and we all played a lot harder the second half. second half, they just came right at us, it, it, which accomplished two things. One, they could out muscle us. They got a lot of big, strong guys. And two, you know, it kept the ball out of our offense's hands. Nebraska sent the pile-driving Kinney into Oklahoma's midsection again and again and pounded out two third-quarter touchdowns, opening a 28-17 lead. We never thought that we didn't have enough time. 
here we were down 11 again uh, after already having dug out of that hole once. Desperate to get back in the game, Oklahoma unfurled one of those plays reserved for dire straits. We had practiced a reverse to Harrison uh, all week in practice, and we saw it coming, and we all went up to play the reverse. We basically caught Nebraska completely by surprise. They thought it was an end run. They trailed by 11. And here is a pass thrown, and it is complete. We kept them from the running plays. And those crazy pass plays just kept killing us. Mildred, on his way to 267 yards of total offense, kept the ball on four straight snaps. And in the final minute of the third quarter, Oklahoma had pulled within 28-24. If you think about it, Oklahoma had to start resorting to tricks, trick plays. We didn't. Ironically, it was an attempted trick play on its next drive that boomeranged on Nebraska. Quarterback tagging, gives the fakes to right on the inside. Tagging lost the ball, and he's Oklahoma with a football. We were rolling along pretty well until we got a little cute with a play and fumbled. Oklahoma cashed in the turnover, but again, the running team did it on a pass. On fourth down, Mildred hooked up with Harrison, his high school teammate, for a 31-28 lead. It was Mildred's fourth touchdown, two by land, two by air. Here's a guy that's a wishbone quarterback, and he was a terrible passer all year long. Everybody makes fun of wobbly passes. Well, hell, that's what they were. And here he is, you know, hitting people in stride. Some quarterbacks are pure passers. Some quarterbacks are throwers. Jack was a grenade thrower, but Jack passed like a surgeon that day. Mildred busting one out here to a man who's open. It's a touchdown, Oklahoma. Down 31-28, Nebraska found itself with three-fourths of the field to negotiate and seven minutes and five seconds remaining in which to do it. I can remember thinking, I'm not going to be stopped. I'm not going to let him stop me. I'm just going to let it all hang out at this point. Audi, Patro. Five years the Quattro all wheel drive in the Audi A4. Take a test drive today. It's chilly out there, so prepare. Prepare like never before for the kind of chili that rattles your bones and shakes you to your core. The forecast is chilly. Bring it on. That's what the true fans say. A goosebump-raising chili that gets inside you and 